dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end Welcome back, everyone, to recap what is going on on Ghosts of Salt Marsh. Um, the crew at the moment has descended into uh, an, um, a burned down abbey upon an island aptly named the Isle of the Abbey. They know that far beneath this uh, place, a some type of magical artifact is being used to control some creatures that are now about to attack salt marsh so hoping to stop this they have gone into the depths of the abbey um they were first met by sort of the head of security who very bluntly told them he wanted no part in it and um gave them the password to get in and the door was open for them. They got down the stairs and um, kind of threw diplomacy out the window and just went hack and slash mode on some evil clerics. But they're evil clerics. Clearly, um, you clearly saw one of them was wearing a very large golden holy symbol depicting the crashing waves of Umberly. So certainly not nice people down here. Um, the battle was intense. And um, you, your dear friend Talise did nearly succumbed to her wounds but is now um healed is now up and some of the remaining cultists and clerics have sort of fled and are cowering in corners at the moment and the two more well-armored guards uh that you had been tangling with now surrendered um in no small part due to the enormous beaver-like creature that nether summoned which basically gnawed the face off of the uh lead cleric here in the abbey so after seeing that many of them threw down their arms and have now surrendered and that is where we pick up the session what we pick up as a hype train oh All my right. gosh hey. how appropriate you guys are the best so yes these two uh, you see some of the um robed figures just cowering in the corners um hoods pulled over their faces kind of looking away hoping just trying not to be noticed and these two heavily armed human men just throw down their weapons one of them looking just trying to push this um terrible summon beaver away from him and there's no please we're just hired we're just hired no more no more gadrozel uh looks down and looks up at nether and says are these made of wood the other one wasn't and nether says well, there's only one way to find out oh, oh i guess you're right uh, <laughs> nether nether c c can we i don't know wait, there was a surrender that happened i don't know that that seems potentially or sorry debris uh that seems a little you know maybe maybe we should take a moment oh it will just take a second but like without any gnawing on people we generally don't gnaw on people who have surrendered and dropped their arms well the other says i i suppose they better run then um I'll, I'll step down into uh, the room so everyone can hear me. Um, Y'all who are still alive, um, if you attack us or hinder us in any way, we will kill you. If you do anything 
that's remotely aggressive towards us, we will kill you. If you want to stay alive, drop your weapons, put yourself in a closet somewhere, and wait till come out until we're done. And if you don't, we'll kill you. What's that? (laughs) And if you don't do it, he says, we'll kill you. (laughs) Is Um, that a help action? That sounds like a help action to me. Go ahead. Make a uh, intimidation check (laughs) with advantage. Serene's trying to learn how to be good with people like she observes Claire being. She's very persuasive. Oh, my God. Wow. That was the shittiest role of my life. That's only an eight. Well, I tried. Yikes. That is yeah, shit happens. Um, kind of funny. Um, a couple of them look about, and <clears throat> they were they were already surrendering and kind of going away from you. But you see that um, this one here, for instance, looks over his shoulder at you, and then kind of enters this room here, and then shuts the door behind him. Um, That's what's Go get him here. Just looks at you and um, sits, uh, just sits in his corner with his hood pulled over his face, not moving. It doesn't seem like they were listening to you, Mariah. Nether commands um, Gadrazel to go after the one that left. You know, Saran, every now and then we people have off days, you know? We don't have to worry about it. I still can't move the token. All right, uh, just pull it onto the the field again, and... Oh, right, right, right. Um, while I... That stuff's running, going on. Um, can we uh, loot some bodies? Uh, loot the bodies yes, on absolutely. the floor. <clears throat> uh, so you, as Gadrizel gets to this doorway, um, pushing up against it, it is um, locked. Is it made of wood? <clears throat> it is made of sturdy wood. <laughs> <laughs> he eats around the, the lock. Well, it's it's a fake a creature, guy. right? It's, it's not actually a. It is a it's 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 beaver it's flavored. It's a fake creature, uh, is, but it, so it's, it's, it's beaver. Uh, gnawing at the um, uh, at the beaver door. Beaver flavored. <laughs> Don't please. Mm, I was hoping yum. no one heard that. And, um, <laughs> oh, Peter! Did you say Sweet beaver summer flavored? Summer child. Thing? You Wait, what was the thing that child. I said last week? Uh, t- something about. <laughs> Hot beavers. <laughs> I don't remember. What well, anyway, uh, am I, I gonna heard all this? about this after or, signing off. You guys heard right back all in the nasty about it. Now. Um, Face down so, in the. As it starts to mm. nod its way, you can hear shouting um, on the other side. Uh, just wait. No, go away. I'll open up. Just a moment. Yeah, Drew and, keeps chewing. Um, you hear Do you think a we couple. Should give him a minute? So you hear some some motion, and then finally, um, before Gadrizel can eat all the way through it, it is a very reinforced door. It would take some time to um, deal enough damage to get through. Um, it is pushed. The door is pushed open, and, and by, I heard you, Mariah, about the searching, but uh, sort of aggressive door. Um, door aggressive is aggression a upon door. Taking... Pr- takes precedence that's fine it's going a bit first and you see this now uh this person standing in the middle of the room now um a number of shelves line the walls and then there is a small writing desk in the southern portion of the room right next to the open door and it stands the um the priest stands just with his hands in the air um as gadrasel uh is able to get through the door Wait, I'm like, you just don't care. Hey, right. sucker! Yeah, but once the door opens, Gadrizel goes down on four feet and just... Looks at him every now and then, making okay. gnawing noises with his teeth. Uh, Prion, can you, um, disarm these, or these fellows over here, gather up their swords and stuff while we, uh, Melvin and I take a peek at what these fellows have on them. Sure, I can do. I'll do that at the end. Okay. Um, I've had a tremendous each... number of gifts and um, subs and stuff oh. just come up. Oh my we're gonna wait goodness, and... it's exploding. Yeah, okay, I don't you. even know what's going on. I hadn't had the chat I've, up. 
Anonymous I've been uh, sub, tracking Pixies it, so I, nuts. I can give we you will have to the recap this stuff as we end. continue forward. But we do have a level, I think it's level three going towards level four, right? Or is it four yeah. going Correct. towards five? Yep. Three going towards four. I'm, which one is it? Three going towards three four. Going towards three to four. four. Yeah. My sound is gone. It's three good. to four. One sec. Oh. <laughs> oh, this happened the other day, didn't it? Guess what, guys? We're level 20 now. Um, yay! I say that every okay. time, and it's never I've been true. a level 100 for a really long time, so... You know what? Um, <laughs> just up. because it hasn't <laughs> happened yet doesn't mean that it can't happen, Sean. So I'm going to stay on the positive side of things, and I'm going to keep putting that positive energy out into the world, and you never I've know. I've never played a character oh God, made it all the way from yes. level 1 to level 20. Never. Self-actualization. Not entire history of d Someday. Day. Someday we'll get there. Yeah. Some bright well. and shining day. While we're waiting for Peter, get stupid, guys. Use the code. Go and buy some dice from Kraken. Good. Stupid. You're watching lovely. us now and you like to buy dice. We have um, a special sponsorship with Kraken Dice, in case you didn't know. Um, if you go to their website and type get stupid oh, no! at checkout, oh, no! you get 10% off. And it also lets them know that we sent you. So we're holding up our end of the symbiotic relationship between Lawful Stupid and the Kraken Klaus. Yes. So please. I... We have some amazing dice. Um, if you're addicted to the way I am. Oh, oh, I think Peter can hear us. Are you back, see Peter? I'm back. I all couldn't right. talk back. after Let's I couldn't it. hear. So there's blindness, deafness, you know, all that. You experienced you know. a lot in this last minute. <laughs> I did. I did. Um, but yes, thank you for the hype train, guys. You can see the details down below. The higher you grow that, the uh, more extra extra store credit we can give away so uh thank you so much for the support once it's done we will calculate what's been given away and then award players the appropriate healing potions inspirations etc uh but first we're gonna loot some guys i believe yeah loot the bodies on the floor loot the bodies, loot the bodies on, the on the floor loot the bodies I like it. on the floor just me oh, wow. no elena was there so um the main um priest the, no way! the one who was uh in charge of everything you will find lying on the ground here he's the one wearing this massive holy symbol um that looks like it is dedicated to umberly um fancier than any of the clerical golden symbols that you've seen presently and it's where just worn just really displayed on his chest um uh, he is also in possession of a potion of healing and then 20, a pouch full of 20 gold pieces. Um, the other sort of sub-priest uh, that you encountered is, um, has a couple of scrolls tucked in his robes. Um, mm, fancy. Opening it up, it's easy enough to identify that he has a spell scroll of command and a spell scroll of hold person Hot shit. there is also a um gilded tome of dark ritual incantations written in aquan and infernal <clears throat> Ooh, okay book of ritual incantations they look to be hymns songs and supplications to umberly herself okay Well, all of that is going to go straight into the bag of holding and um, party loot. Another begins to make her way over to where Gadrazel has this other priest cornered. Call that monster off. This is Gadrazel. My name is Debri. What's your name? <sighs> Debris. My name is Odium. Odium. We have no business with you, Odium. We're heading down to take care of some things below. How do we get there? What's safe? What's not? Only the boss there. Ozymandias. Only he. Ozymandias is the boss. 
and he gestures and he looks he kind of approaches and then points around the corner to the uh, slain form of the head cleric that you were this fucker? fighting earlier <clears throat> yeah yeah is it only he knew the way oh so it's a maze well, at least that's the way it's supposed to be did he know the way he knew the way and you don't know the way no I was supposed to be the only other person allowed down those the damn winding way as it's called supposed to go I as the second till he married that bitch from salt marsh say what now took her instead it's interesting can you elaborate on that please some auburn haired woman surely you must have heard her name something like It's a coward's name if ever I heard one. Elsie Chandler. Ah. Uh, I see. Is she down there now? I haven't seen her in some time. Certainly not before the attack. Right. Right. And for those not initiated, those not allowed down, is it trapped? Is it cursed? It's a place where Umberly's will is made manifest. Well, Umberly didn't save you all up here now, did it? Umberly may be powerful, but eventually she has to contend with the will of mortals. Hmm. So, as I said, you're free to go. Are you telling the truth as you say that? I am. But that's your only choice. Go or die. What are you going to do with this place when you're done? We'll leave it how we found it. That is a lie. Make a deception check in that case. I'm going to use my inspiration. Mm. So rolling with advantage. Shall we do the shout outs while we're waiting? Yeah, did we complete our hype train? Track and dice. Yep. I, you I put it in the chat for Amazing. you. Peter. Oh. Hmm? It's in the chat, chat for you, Peter. Lovely. Well, thank you. Um, well, we are anxiously awaiting that persuasion roll from Debris. A um, little bit of shout out going down the line. Alias Prime X. Man, I'm anxiously awaiting Alias, the, the next iterations of Alias Prime. Um, I can just get better every time. Um, I, I hope the next one has a headphone jack. Alias Prime X, thank you for the 301 bits and the gifted sub. Thank you, Pingo Boy, for 100 bits. Lore Explorers, 300 bits. Manx Works, 200 bits. Desk Bound Dwarf, hey buddy, 100 bits. Thank you very much. Anonymous, whoever you are out there gifting five subs, you anonymous person, you. Thank you very much. Pixie, 800 bits and five gifted subs. Gee, we should name a ship after you or something. Art of Mike Disney, 200 bits. Um, thank you guys so much for the 2,000 bits and total of 11 gifted subs. Amazing support. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be giving away a little bit of extra store credit when we go to our break because of that. So um, again, we couldn't do this without you. Everything we do here, we are reinvesting into the stream. We have literally so much character art goodness and fun stuff coming up it's just we've it, it, we're just waiting for it to complete we we cannot wait to show you it's I'm hoping be it's done before next cool. week 
Yeah, nice. we'll, we'll show you. We'll show you soon. Um, so, players, I'll let you decide how you want to um, divvy that up. Do you want four d twenty inspirations? Do you want two healing? Yes, potions? I just so, used mine. So yes. Uh, well, with the gift of subs and everything, you could probably give everyone one. It's up to you. All right. If not, if you don't, don't have inspiration, have one. I don't have one. Please. I mean, I have please one. Take, please take inspiration, and then Can we I will give Can I have a potion a... instead? You could have a d six instead. Yes. I also, I also have inspiration already from last time. Well, you can okay. Have a D6 as well, Those of you no. who have inspiration, take a D6. Those of you who don't have inspiration, take inspiration. That and was a level three hype train. So that is level, what, and we will give a, a level basic three? healing potion as well. Fifteen. So. Fifteen. So. Um, I am very glad I used my Kraken dice and my inspiration because yes. I rolled a one and a fourteen. So with my very good add on there, that fourteen becomes a eighteen. Eighteen in deception. And okay, he will then say, "Right, enjoy your time in her winding way." I don't know why you and said he that. Take start. all of them with you. Hmm. Can you take all of them with you? He starts and he turns his eye towards the holy symbol on Ozymandias's dead body removed maybe if I were here you know, or something well how can you be the leader if you're dead and um Gadrizel goes <laughs> well I'll take myself out then do what you want with the rest as he flips past and starts to head towards the doorway. Do we and have time for a short rest? On out. Uh, Maybe. Um, there are still some should, people lurking yeah. about here, but... We should I took care of decide my one. on a uh, defensible position. Um, yes. Which you may see, very well be this room. Mm -hmm. It's um, a door here. You see one, two... Three, four, five, six other doors. I would love uh, for Melvin. Uh, boyo, we gotta, we're gonna search this room over here. Oh, oh okay. I come over and. While they search the room, um, DM uh, Nether will go and menace the rest. Um, if you need me to make intimidation checks to get them out, then I will. Okay, and you're. Uh, all you're trying to do is get them to leave. Yes. Okay. Leave all weapons behind. Mm -hmm. I uh, disarm no bows. Them. I Either disarm everyone. Here. And I sh and I'm going to second wind myself as well. Okay. I A total end, of uh, three more plus the guards will also then depart. Um Melvin, uh, you can roll with advantage on investigation. I will assist. Okay. You're better at that than I am. I'm gonna roll with my Kraken dice. Yeah. That's um, why I did badly on my intimidation. I rolled on both 20. I have a total of 20 for investigation. Okay. 13 uh, plus 7. Very nice. So, looking around, you um, easily see every nook and cranny here. The books are rather typical, lining these bookshelves as you look through them. Um, even checking a couple, one maybe has a false binding, but you see as it's been simply a regular book that's rebound. Another one you take out is um, another book of incantations, but this is more like sailors riddles and sort of boogeyman stories about Umberly as opposed to the actual profane um, incantations that the tr her true worshippers use. Um, nothing of interest on the bookshelves. The desk, as you look through it, has a couple of compartments, actually, that seem would have been hidden, but seem to have been opened up and emptied of their contents. But there's nothing of interest in them? Or in the desk itself. 
Uh, no, not any longer. Okay. I should have searched that guy before he left. Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's it. Nothing else interesting Probably in here? Probably not okay. too late to go and find him. But I, I was going to say, should we run after him? Yeah. I, do you want to go, go get him, Gadget Zell? Gadget Zell heads out to look for him. I'm going to start going too, I guess. Yeah. We should all probably go if we're going to go. Yeah. Have we checked all That's these doors? Oh, how, how important can it be? Not yet. Pretty important. If it's a hidden in a secret compartment on a desk? Probably powerful magical items or, or lots of treasure. Who knows? All right. Is everyone going after? Yeah. Okay, so you all run up. You see, just gathered in the wreckage, uh, the burning wreckage of the abbey here, a couple of the guards are just gathered. Um, They seem, with the other clerics, seem to be just kind of debating what the next step is going to be. You hear the skull dunes mentioned a few times, and then you all come up. You done already? Uh, No, uh, is the guy who we... uh, Nether was talking to. Is he around here? Well, is he here. one of the people? Uh, what was his name? Odium. Odium. Yeah. O-D-M. Is he is he amongst the uh, the crew that's up here? No, DM? he's not. A, he's not um, amongst those assembled at the moment. Uh, uh, hey, where'd the uh, squirrely looking fellow run off to? Odium. They just kind of look between each other and then look at you. Um, and one of the guards steps forward. Off in the brushes that way. Is he telling the truth? <laughs> uh, 13 plus 6, 19. Hey, he seems to have broken ranks from the rest of them to give you this information. I think he's still a little bit nervous by the giant beaver that had um, pierced his armor with its teeth earlier. So he uh, seems to have given you this information in earnest. Uh, is the brush and in the direction of this, the dunes? No, it's uh, north of the island. It seems to be going the exact opposite direction. I uh, said, ear if like someone up. would like to follow him, make a survival check. I could do that. I send Earlack after him. Up into the sky to see if he can see him. <clears throat> On survival, okay. yeah. Uh, have Earlack make a perception check. 14 on survival. And Eolak's perception is plus three. That's cut. 18 total. Okay. With those two rolls, you are able to follow the tracks pretty well, as well as uh, in, in spots where it gets a little murky. You're get, given a general heading. You do catch up to him after some time in which he just um, uh, sort of turns around and starts backing away from you all and said, What? Liars do... Hey, what'd you take from the office? My own things. Hmm? To survive. Like what? Let's have a look then. I walk up to you. being honest? Um, you can make an insight check. I have a nine. I believe him. Uh, I rolled a 15 total. He believes what he says, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just going to walk up to him and start patting him down. If he doesn't mm-hmm. let me, then I'm going to knock him out. He looks and Rob me blind, too, will you? You hear the clinking of a coin pouch. You feel a couple... Um, some things tucked along the belt line of his robe. Some of them feel like papers. Others, um, maybe a solid bottle at his hip. Take you. I say, just take a seat. If it's not important, you can have it back. What if it is important and I need it? Well, it depends What's the what point it is of now, release if you're just releasing me to death? I could give you a different release if you like. Hold your tongue. She'd like you, and then he just sits down. 
Eh, whatever. What does he have? He has two scrolls, a what looks to be a potion, and then a pouch of gold. Uh, two scrolls of. Take a look at him. Um. Oops, I'm, am I getting my two scrolls? Did I already tell you what the two scrolls you found were before? You did, the command and hold person. Yes, okay, so he has a spell scroll of light and a spell scroll of bless. I'm not sure I really care about the light. Bless might be helpful. But... Light as in the cantrip? Mm-hmm. And a bottle, a potion? Uh, Seems to be. A healing potion? A, a recognizable potion? Or something unknown? Um, this liquid looks um, a, little, a little bit different. Um, it's more of a dark bluish tint. Let's see. What's this? It's a potion. Ooh, couldn't have guessed that. What kind of potion? One that would be beneficial in my travels getting away from here. Ah, it's to help him breathe in the water. Yeah, we can already do that. Or walk on it. May I go for the second time? Or are your tensions as murky as these waters surrounding the island? Oh, wait. I'm going back. And Gadrizel comes over and Nether puts her hand on his shoulder and he begins to walk her back. That was less interesting than I thought it would be. Up to you, Prion. I don't much care one way or the other. Oh, they leave the decisions to you, thug. Well, go on, do what you will. Shake my head at him, then walk off. <laughs> Shut up, Z. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, <laughs> do it. Back down we go. You leave him and you uh, now descend back into the depths of the abbey, now deserted. Well, what door do we want to try next, y'all? Yeah, like Pexy's eyes out. I feel <clears throat> like it's safe. I, I would very much like to try and, and get Dahl back. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's awfully dark here without being able to see. Uh, I guess we could take a short rest. A DM, is the door down the stairs able to be barred? The This one here was indeed barred and locked when you um, approached, but okay. you had a password, so they let you in. So right. um, searching Pretty among good. the bodies, you are able to find a rudimentary skeleton key, which does lock the door. And then um, there is a bar tossed to the side that you could um, block okay. entry from above. Then I would say that we should set that up and we can put ourselves into that um, room with only one entry and um, have a little uh, short resty poo. If, if you'd like, uh, Gadrasel will not be around for much longer. He can do a little scouting. I'm all right with that. And another nods to Gadrasel. Um, so will she need to keep concentration? Can she begin to summon, um, her, resummon her familiar, uh, without keeping, yeah, without breaking concentration? Hmm, I believe once you, I thought that the, the switchover happened when you started to cast the new concentration spell. That, that makes a lot of sense. I just was yeah. curious. It's not something that's ever come up for me yet. 
So in that case, she cannot summon resummon Dahl and keep Gadrazel around. So she will go over to him and feel his face and do his you, cheeks. And say, why wouldn't you be able to? Oh. Did you? I thought you said I couldn't. Did you say good? Well, but find familiar is not a concentration spell. No, it's a ritual. Right. My question was, could Sorry. I cast the ritual? I misheard. I was thinking, keep... I thought you were talking about, I thought you asked about concentration. If you start, you can you cast know, a ritual I have spell while concentration. concentration. I have concentration on um, summon, um, summon fate. I believe all ritual casting does is extend the casting time by 10 minutes. I don't think there's any other effect. Oh, cool. All right, then I will do that. And I, I'm seeing some up. skeptical looks in the, uh, you know, but... Um, I just thought that uh, casting times longer than an action took concentration to cast, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I, I don't believe so. Personally. I don't think so. Um, it's not something that I'm aware of. Jail! Hello! What's up? Oh. What's up? Oh, nice Sorry. of you to make cool. it. Uh, it does say in longer casting times, um... When you cast a spell with a casting time longer than a single action or reaction, you must spend your action each turn casting the spell and maintain concentration while you do so. There it is. Oh. There it is. Okay, thank you for finding so, that. I did not, I was not aware of that. You uh, learn something uh, new Yeah, Z. Day. Z I'm got sure it Z wrong. Was yet... What? <gasps> <gasps> Z got something Z wrong. Z got it don't, wrong. Don't you dare taunt the Z. He is. <laughs> you stop. Yeah. He is... Get great he job, is... Z. He yeah, he's gonna, out he's so about much to do some even further, knowledge. even further plumbing of the information. Uh, he's gonna Z come is, back. Z is yeah. my boot. <laughs> <Careful. Yeah. laughs> Crazy. Anyway, before we provoke uh, the beast even further, I, does that does that mean we do say goodbye to Gadrazel? It does. Okay. Okay. I miss your beaver. That is one strange creature you've come up with. Well, I just called, and it came. Never seen something like that before. Yeah, me neither. If you'll excuse me, I need to try and find Doll again. I should probably roll some hit dice. Yes, and, uh, Nether begins a short rest. ritually casting. Find familiar. And you all may oh, take a short rest. Okay. Hello, thank you for the raid, 42. Fable. Thank you for the raid. Hey, raiders. Mm -hmm. How are all of you? Thank you for coming along. We're playing a little bit of Ghost of Salt Marsh here. Um, we are actually in the, the giveaway. midst yes. of a, um, a giveaway. We are also in the midst of a um, classic old school module called Isle of the Abbey, which has been republished in Ghosts of Salt Marsh. So hang out with us. It's going to be super fun. And we are doing some giveaway for Crack and Dice. Please, Raiders, enter exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. We are giving away two sets of store credit when we take our break, probably in about an hour or maybe a little less than an hour. So hang out with us, enter the giveaway, and uh, glad to have you here. All right, group, long or short rest, short rest, you may complete. Yay. Thanks. Um, did, you, did you say we were getting a potion from the uh, hype train earlier? Yes. You never rolled that. Uh, choose a uh, a basic or a um, basic healing potion from. Yeah, I thought it was just that if we had a D20 we got already, it, that yeah. we got to get a potion instead. If you had right? D20 already, you got no, a D6. No, no, no. I was instead. going to give everyone an inspiration of the variety that they need, and then on top of that, a single healing potion. Oh. Dude. The question Purple. is, what if you are not everyone? Not everyone for the party. A single healing <laughs> potion for the party. Ah. Do you, do you um, mind if I uh, throw that into my, uh, my Fine. Can has? Fine with me. Fine. <laughs> Kink. Uh, yeah. it was just, it was like, fine. Yeah. And she cut herself off. Fine. The... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It is eerily so. quiet now that everything has departed here. There is a, um, you hear the soft dripping of water in corners. Um, you can kind of oh! feel the dampness settle around you. <laughs> I'll sing a song of rest. So it's not quiet and we get more dice to roll. Where's okay. the song go? 
Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob. Oh, no. Do you know that my summer home looks like a pineapple? Oh no. Um, uh, good, a really, really great guess. So, so how does living inside of a pineapple work, Saran? Um, do you do you like hollow it out, or is it like a really big pineapple? Um, y'all, who I would never hollow something out. I have people to do that for me. Um, but yes, it is hollowed out. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> Takes down notes. Was it permanently enlarged in order to fit people? Also, where'd you get the pineapple from? Are there secrets to the deep that you just probably can't understand? That's probably um, the most important secret of the deep. And where we source our giant pineapples, I'm not yes. at liberty to discuss. That's what I want to know. So. Okay. All right. Be right. with enough claw wine. Right. So, so we're rested. Yep, and if you rolled hit dice, make sure you roll your extra d6 for Song of Rest. Mm -mm -mm. Let me roll that. I only need two. There we go. Thank you. I'm helping. So shall we hide I did see what's in all these other doors? Yes, which one would you like me to open first? Let's go clock rise around the room. All right, with that. Starting at which one? This one. Okay. Wouldn't it be that um, one? So this Clockwise, is, area is lit um, by torches. Um, you can also see a glowing, flickering firelight spilling from under the doorway on the other side of here, and. There's actually a scent of roasted meat and perhaps something like a fish stew on the other side. Um, I believe you guys have passive perception. Someone has passive perception of 15, right? Yes, At least I have 16. Okay. In that case, looking around these doors as you were just as you're going about, Ooh. you can see that these are all used. Um, you can see bits of dirt on the handle, a bit of wear, um, scuffs going in and out. These doors are all opened and shut on a regular basis. Um, this is a place that is frequently used. Um, unlike the main door to the stairway going up, there doesn't seem to be any sort of security measures on any of these doors. I'll open the first one. There we go. Opening up this one, you reveal what seems to be a simple kitchen some stores tucked in cupboards to the end, a um, spit in the center of the room, and a large cauldron, which is bubbling um, gently in the northern or the northwestern corner. Interesting. Um, DM, at the end of the short rest, I would like to have ritually cast um, Detect Magic as I take the thin see-through, uh, essentially rice paper, and apply it to my glasses. And they okay. meld into the glass, allowing me to see magical sources through them. Very cool. The mat, the holy symbol is emanating more magic than you would typically find from a regular holy symbol um, mm -hmm. uh, that you picked up. That is, besides that, um, you haven't detected anything extra. This room appears to be a bunk room doubled as a wine storage room. Um, there are small kegs scattered everywhere and some floor to ceiling wine racks filled with bottles dominating the southern wall. Oh, where's the There's Maris a crudely made it. pallet of uh, rags yeah, and really. sacks in the center. Close it before Saran Some, <laughs> Some random cleric wanders in wearing a uh, saloon <laughs> amulet and is like, why? <laughs> um, do the bottles look like they're like they're good? Like, um, there does, Bri is the one there does like seem one to be party. liquid in them. The corks yeah. on at least half of the bottles seem to be intact. I would like to start loading up the bag and the holding with wine. <laughs> okay. Uh, How many uh, bottles of wine do I take that look like they're intact? Um, With that many wine racks, you probably can find 48 to... 56 48 bottles. bottles of wine in the bag 48 Wait, bottles so 48 of wine. or 56 
48. 48, okay. They bought a four case deal. <laughs> Is this all claw wine? Or are we looking at some different varietals? None of it's claw <laughs> wine. Uh, it's mostly. That's a local delicacy. Across the room to it was like, one. do they have noble grapes there? Or... Uh, so this room has been cleared of all debris. The three walls are heavily curtained debris? with draperies of thick of black velvet, and the east wall is decorated with a horrible mural depicting a. Um, um, depicting dozens of people drowning in the water. Near the west wall is a stone table on which a large iron brazier burns. The table has been scrubbed and scoured, but it has many odd discolorations and scorch marks. Melvin, what do your magical eyes see? Is there anything magical about this brazier? Uh, no. Uh, but Prion, as you look in the room, you can see... Look, it's even on the map. There are some scraping oh. marks oh. down here. I walk in. Secret tunnel. I'll check. Flies in and looks around, and then Debris looks up and says, or N Nether looks up and says, I think they use this for torturing. It's just a breather. The, behind the black curtain you are able to find the end of the scrape marks and through some simple examination can find that a couple finger holds you can pull this wall out and reveal a hidden passage beyond it is pitch blackness it doesn't bother me um dm is i didn't hear what you said jade sorry Oh, Jade, were you talking? The darkness doesn't bother me. Or does it? Hello, darkness. My I was going to say before we go down there, we oh, we should check the other rooms. Yeah, um, and I was going to ask um, DM: Is there a check that would be appropriate for just kind of trying to ascertain what the purpose of this room was, making kind of an educated guess? Um. So, uh, religion and investigation could both be used to okay. further oh, examine an investigation it. check. I'm kind of curious. You! I rolled well. 21. 21. Um, you look and as you approach the brazier, you see it hasn't probably been used recently, but you smell maybe incense or different types of perfumes that may have been cast into the brazier at one point as part of a ritual. You also can see what looks to be a chunk of maybe platinum that seems to have melted as if in a crucible at the bottom of the brazier here. I kind of take out a dagger and kind of poke at it a little bit. Can so it it's out? extremely hot. You would have to oh, insert your dagger burning. into basically molten. Um, yeah. So I don't do that. I thought it was cool. Right. Uh, is there a um, an off switch on the fire? <laughs> None that you see immediately. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I know. That would be Nether great. steps oh. forward and repeatedly <laughs> casts a ray of frost. Um, your magics seem to constantly interact, kind of hissing and casting this um, steam-like mist throughout the room, but you can see that the source of your magic and the source of this flame seem to be at odds, but none of them gaining the upper hand versus the other. Um, it continues to burn. The, the brazier was not magical, though. The... Um... Right. Um, no, excuse me. The flame is does seem to have a magical property to it. I'm sorry. Okay, I would share that with the group then. Uh, <laughs> I have had it with magical braziers. <laughs> oh. uh, let's see here. And it has platinum. Okay. 
I think I want to circle it back around to that because that's interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm all for checking out these next couple of rooms here. Priyan, okay. kick it in. Kick in the room here, or, or, or just open it. I'll you know, try. you don't actually have to kick it. Okay, I open it first. Which looks and then to I'll be kick it. So, sort That's of fine. just a crude barracks. Um, it's an iron <laughs> kettle in the center of Check the room, a number door. of beds along the edge, and some debris piled in the northeast corner. Is all you find. What's inside the iron kettle? Um, sort of a oil slick in what used to maybe be a broth or a stew. Oh. I'll open the north one. In here, you find um, what looks to be a storage room also with a bed in the corner. Search? Search? I'll, take... I'll let the user Nominate search, Melvin with advantage. And I'll go open the next I'll one. I'll take some time while Prion is doing the next one to, to search this room. Okay. Brian, you open this one. Um, there are some empty weapon racks, some bins, some shelves on the walls. There's a bedroll and three blankets oh, on the uh, ground. Oh, DM, sorry. Here. Speaking of weapons, um, what weapons did Prion take off of the soldiers before they departed? Um, two long swords, two short swords, and two, um, two crossbows, heavy crossbows each with a quarrel of 20 bolts. Thank you. Uh, my investigation is a 21 total. I've used my okay. D6 inspiration for that. Uh, looking about in here, then, you are able to find a couple of things that might be useful. Um, two 50-foot coils of rope. You find um, a bag of 20 torches and uh, a 10-foot wooden pole. What dungeon dell was it complete without a ten foot wooden pole? <laughs> That's all. And in party the room that uh, Prion has just opened, um, there are um, numerous statues and figurines. Statues of dogs, horses, monks, pilgrims, footmen, and knights on horseback, and several garden gnomes. All these statues are between one and three feet tall, except for the ones standing against the northern wall, which are life-sized. One is a robed skeleton holding a large scythe, and the other is a medusa. On the floor in front of these statues is a pallet of several blankets. A medusa? Mm-hmm. Do, do these appear to be magical? Statues? No. Or blankets, I suppose? Uh, no, no, no magic blankets, no. <laughs> uh, and Prion, you see that there, with your passive perception, there are indeed scuff marks at the foot of the Medusa statue. Prion, what's your passive, by the way? I don't Sixteen. What you said. Okay. If it helps, I have eighteen for future reference, Peter. Okay. I walk in. He dies. No. Uh, I look at the scratch marks. And try to move the statue. All right. Make a strength check. Strength, you say? Strength check. It's not the same for it. Athletics. Not the same. Um. For this, your strength modifier. Just brute strength. Just brute strength. I thought that would still be athletics. What's athletics do then? I have like nine total. Pulling. That's like a. That's like swimming. Climbing up a, a, a straight cliff face or um, carrying, uh, like swimming. Firemen carrying something really heavy across a ruin or something like that. That are combined athletic feats. You know, the the process of lifting is the strength check. But doing a full lift action, you know, and doing a weightlifting competition would be like an athletics check. Okay. So, nine total. Um, nine, you said? Yeah. Um, you think this has to weigh at least 700 pounds, and you're not quite able to budge it out of the way. Especially not without any tools. Hmm. 
But looking around, it looks like it has got an access point, yeah? The it's scrape. just, you just see scrape marks in front of it. Yeah. Melvin, do you see anything in here? I mean, there's, there's a bunch of the statues and some blankets. Um, there's some scrape marks near this thing. Yeah. Uh, Ray in? You're not mm -hmm. able to move it yourself, right? So Ryan's a strong girl. I'm very, very strong. We we have some yes. ropes that we just found in the other room. We could we could use that, and if we could make a fulcrum of some kind, we could we could translate the force. Or if you guys have pulleys, that would be even better. Uh, we'd be able to to translate our pulling force into um, greater lifting force, and we'd be able to lift the statue potentially and and move it out of the location. What if it's got a button on it that may move it itself? Oh, that that's well. If we have it, possible, seen but it's it, not then... magical, so it would have to be like a mechanical thing. And I mean, I can take a look. Um, I'll go ahead and inspect the the statue, DM. I'll help. Can okay. I lift something? I've got and a kraken inspection. on my kraken dice, Krakens. so a total of twenty-seven investigation. Uh, with a Natural 27, 20. you find nothing that would give you any sort of hint as to any mechanism or something. But you do look at the bottom and you see the way those grooves slide against the stone tiles. It looks like it is it is indeed pulled and slid downward to the south um, at some point. The grooves just match up too well with the pattern of wear. I mean, I, th I think we could wrap ropes around it at two different points and, and pull it and hopefully not pull it over, but pull it forward. Be awkward. Sure. Sure, let's Sorry. do that. Someone else should yeah. do that. I'm not very strong. Sorry. I'm very strong. Serayan comes forward and looks meaningfully at Melvin and steps in front of him so she can... <laughs> help Prion move the statue. I thought you were going to do that to Prion and I was just going to be like, please fail, please fail. Alright. Um, so Rayan looks meaningfully at Prion. No. Too late. <laughs> okay, so Rayan make a strength check. My new using my new Kraken dice, I will do that. I got the glow in the dark one. That's not and they are Dope as hell. Well, that's the style. Do, 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 do. Da 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 da. Cracking dice. Yes. So this is supposed to turn glowy in the dark, but it is not yet dark here. So we'll keep you all updated. I know you're on the all edge right. of your seats. Okay, I rolled a sixteen. That is gonna do it, no matter what. And so you Dope. see this. Um, Triton woman kind of go get behind, get between the wall and the statue, and just push out with her legs and <laughs> grind the statue out of the way. Melvin, your senses immediately light up with a magical sense as the stone is pushed out of the way, and you find two more potions of healing beneath it, hidden down about two feet down under the tile, under all of the stone. Oh, so it's just like a little cubby hole, not like a, a cubby secret hole. tunnel. Oh, okay. No secret tunnel. Negative. You have already found a secret tunnel. Ready? Down good. the other way. Uh, oh, the, the, the secret tunnel. tunnel. Who currently down. doesn't have a potion of healing? Let me have a Party. look. Party folk. I... Who does not have a potion of healing? I have two. Okay. I also have two. I have one greater. I had one, potion. but I gave it away. Then you, you should, should take, this take one. Nether also there has are two. I, I, Serene, just take both of these. Yeah, that's good. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And Serene puts them in her pack. <laughs> Great. Right, we head to the secret passage. Secret tunnel. Okay, the light completely disappears. It is now quite dim as you approach this area. And that's like dark vision dim. Absolute blackness for those of you who do not have dark vision. Is that anyone in this party? Um, Nether is blind, but... It's like well, Nether has no vision, but... Uh, could you remind me of passive perceptions for people? 16. 18. 14. Okay. Expertise is the best. 
Oh dear, I just realized something. What? Sprites don't have dark vision. Heather <gasps> cannot see. Yeah. Well, we, we did just find 20 torches. That's gonna help Nether see. That one. All right. Well, it, it'll help her sprite. It's true. Deb also, Debbie's my passive sprite. perception's 11. I'll hang in the uh, back so that I don't give away our position. Do, do any of our um, magically inclined folk have the light spell? Just as a point of curiosity. I, um, I didn't prepare it today. I didn't realize we were okay. going to be going. Um, uh, Talise has light. Can Talise, got... instead of us using um, a, a torch, can Talise just make Prion shiny? I've got dancing. No, not Prion. Uh, well, or... oh, well, either one of one of the two clerical individuals should create some light for uh, for Debris. Here, okay. Debris holds out a shell. Cast it on that. I suppose I can, and Anaris will take it and use ca uh, dancing lights on it. Oh. No, I, I need the light spell. Dancing lights doesn't last long enough. Uh, oh, Talise has Talise that. Talise could do that. Okay. Talise will cast light on it. But later uh, we can have a disco have... party with dancing lights. Oh, and then another puts it <laughs> Now you have the her. bright light yeah. of uh, shining out ahead another of you. Another puts it on. onto the net that she's wearing. <clears throat> and the idea is that if we ever need to be in darkness, then um, Doll will come down and take it and, and it will go into invisibility and the light will go away. Cool, cool. All right. Liz, they uh, like your well. makeup tutorial. All right. Is Prion on a solo you. mission, or are you all nope, approaching? Nope, we're coming. We're coming. We're, we're coming, yeah. We're coming. I don't want to be second, Very though. Good. As he approaches, Prion, as you uh, step to here, you hear just this sort of creaking sound. And from as the darkness falls across the far corner of the room you see what looks to be a pile of rags then just kind of get up and there's this hooded figure standing with its back to you these all of these things are revealed in simultaneously when you guys step into this room the creaking sound that you heard comes from the form of two monstrous skeletons each seeming, each holding a large axe and having enormous oh, bovine skulls on top of their heads. And in the corner, you see this hooded figure, which then slowly turns around and where there would normally be a face, you see a dark black slits disappearing into darkness and a long angular um, mouth that looks like it was just designed to. Oh, um, I hate oh, that shit so much. From your body. And uh, <laughs> could we get a Priya? Uh, not a Priya. Uh, Sarayan and an Anaris in the in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering where you Please. guys would have been in that marching order there. Sarayan would have been in the front. Head for some initiative. Oh, oh we meant to be able to see all of its stuff. No, yeah. We're, we should not be able to see all the Bodic stuff. Don't look at it. Okay. I meant to do the token, not the the thing. Nice, Mom. Where's the handout? Creatures and monsters. Here you go. You can look at this. That is what you see in the far corner. Bodak Horseman. Mm, that, that's Turn not a show I want to watch. <laughs> Love Bojack Horseman. Yeah, I don't like Bodak Horseman, though. Give him a chance. No. Give him, always give him a chance. Uh, give him a chance. Appears to be attacking us, so I'd rather not. <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 we're gonna die. That's probably fine. 
Okay, do you all see yourself on the oh, initiative tracker? Right. Looks like yes. we got everyone there. Melvin, fireball the room. I still don't have fireball. <laughs> Wait, I'm in the room. You guys keep asking. Sarayan, where would you be with this combat situation? Would you be up next to Prion, do you think, walking side by side? Or yeah. I think I so. I figured that's where you guys usually are. So cool. All right, yeah. that's where we start. Melvin, you're up. Oh, God. Um. So glad we have light. This would be oh, terrifying nice. in the dark. <laughs> Still is terrifying. I'm gonna uh, um, sort of panic, panicly <laughs> uh, uh, reach out at the uh, at Bodak. The well, I don't know his name, but whatever. The the creepy thing across the room in the, in the Brian. robes, and um, I will attempt to cast Mind Sliver on him. I need an Intelligence saving throw. DC 15. His name is Jed. <laughs> I have... Jed Bodek. I, I have saved Jeffrey. with a 16. Okay. Um, I think that that is just a full save. So that's fine. Okay. No effect. Is it a, uh, a cantrip? Yeah. That is cantrip, yep. Okay, gotcha. All right. Anything else? Uh... No, I'm just going to take a step back. Okay. Bodak will step forward, looking at both of you, Sarayan and Prion. He's going to look at um, Sarayan. Or actually, hmm, no, it is going to look back at you, Melvin, and its eyes fix on you after you have tried to cast that aggressive spell on it. I need a constitution saving throw as the mere sight of its empty face seems to draw your life force out from within you. That's a nine total. Okay, you take 20 points of necrotic damage. Oh, she. Okay. Very good. All right. Inaris, it is your turn. Oh, shit. Uh, how does Melvin look after that? Uh, about a third. About a, oh, about a Remaining. Shoot him. Shoot. Okay, so... Uh, I think Inaris would probably cast Healing Word on him. It's my bonus action. And then... Go. Hey! Four points of healing! Okay. Thank you. <sighs> Someone's gotta carry the party. Alright, that's your bonus action. Would you like to use an action? Yes, yes that is what I'm getting to now. I will use my short bow. I'm getting better at combat, guys! 23. On... Where are you with that? Bodak Horseman here. <laughs> it's now his name. Bodak Horseman. <laughs> Okay, uh, go ahead right. and roll damage. That hits. Yes. Okay, so nobody's currently. So there's no sneak attack damage, right? So it'd just be. I believe that's correct. Is this a mundane weapon? Uh, Ray, yes, it's not magical. Okay, it does not seem as effective as you would like, but it still deals damage. Freon. Freon cast protection like from evil from and good. Daenerys, would you like to move at all? Heck no. Okay. All right. Freon, as you start your turn, the deathly eyes of this creature seem to just be overbearing. You can make the decision to avert your eyes for your turn or to continue your turn as normal. Is that the Bodak you're talking about? Yes. I will close my eyes and cast protection versus good and evil. Okay. As an action, anything else on your turn? Um, can't do anything as a bonus action, can I? Nope. Okay. The aura continues to fester around you um, as you end your turn uh, within its gaze. Uh, 
you're able to avoid the effect, the, the most direct effects, but you still take five points of necrotic damage as you end your turn oh, wow. um, in this location. Saran. Okay. Same thing. The eyes are dark, foreboding, and seem to just invite your en life energy to leave your body. Um, do you continue your turn as normal or avert your gaze? I avert my gaze. Okay. What happens then? Yeah. You, you lose your action. Disadvantage. Oh. Well, beans. Okay, that's fine. Okay. On everything so... or just attacks against the Bodak? Um, she, if she were to avert her gaze and completely turn around, like get to right here and put, purposefully keep her back to the creature, then she could probably attack normally. Um, however, in that situation, if you're, if you okay. are purposely sure, sure. holding your back to a creature and averting your gaze that way, I would say that it probably has advantage on attacks against you just because okay. you are um, effectively blinded towards it. You are That's not fair. keeping your head on the swivel. Fair. That's how I'm going to go forward with that. Sure, sure. Okay, so the first thing that I will do is cast Divine Favor as my bonus action. Mm -hmm. Is that affected by this? Or can I just um, cast it regularly? You can you can cast it regularly. Okay. Um. So I don't know what that means. Why it gave me points? Because that doesn't. Is it an extra three then each time? It's damage. Uh, you roll an extra yeah. d four, but we'll use so the three an extra... next time you hit. Okay. Cool. 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 Um. Okay. So now, having cast divine favor, I will use my action to attack the um are they all bodax <laughs> what are these other ones these things are large bovine looking skeletons um i've just posted a little picture in the uh, chat for you guys um i yeah. will post a, another little summary here um, all right um it's so... a, it is a it's the skeleton of a minotaur okay so uh Saran will attempt at disadvantage to use her long sword to whack at the creature. Okay, you, can, you may do so at disadvantage as you are averting your gaze. Uh, be <laughs> seven, lol. Seeing a one and a nine for your first attack. Yeah. And I believe you have two attacks, correct? Um. You're level five, you should. I am. All right, you make your second attack. Okay. It make the disadvantage. Ah, attack. channel divinity. What the frig? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. So. Me neither. That's what's funny about that. So the second attack has a 16, which will hit this creature. Hooray! Undead Minotaur. Get wrecked. <laughs> All right. 10 damage. So, so 10 mm -hmm. points of damage. Cool. Anything else from Sarayan? Uh, no. All right, toe to toe with it. Now it's the Minotaur skeletons' turns, and they both try and attack each of you once. Um, against Sarayan, I have an eleven to hit. That uh, doesn't hit. I know. Is it this uh, giant axe swings very slowly? The bones creaking doesn't seem to be in the greatest shape. Um, and at disadvantage against Prion, um, I have <laughs> uh, 18 to hit. Missed. Right. Rolled pretty good for disadvantage, but will not help him. That's that for them. Nether. Nether um, takes in the seed that she's seeing and she realizes there's some sort of gazing attack going on and she um, holds her fists close to her and she says uh, Nuanda, Tuatha, and she summons another fae. This time she summons which is a little octopus uh, fae that has long, um, hard and uh, sword-like appendages on the front two of its um, uh, front uh, two of its legs. She summons it right in front of the bodak, and then as a bonus action, it 
But first of all, it's going to he's going to take an attack. No, uh, that's right. So first thing is a bonus action. She call, she creates a five foot square of block of darkness over the bodak. So oh. she, she goes, and a big old cloud of inky blackness just sort of comes out of her Ew. like a octopus. Does that work when it's on on land? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a fey. It's it's she's casting the spell darkness. Um, It does the. It's fine because we'll be just doing it. But the the fey does take its turn after yours, right? Yeah. Okay. So so that's uh, another's turn. Before that, that's another's turn. Um, uh, And she's not going to have Doll do anything because she's pretty sure these are undead, and poison won't do anything to that. So you have created a space of magical darkness around it, is that correct? I have created a five-foot cube of darkness on its space. Um, okay. So, um, cannot see the Bodak, uh, but she is going to attack anyway. Okay. Is it uh, magical darkness? It is. Okay, cool. Five-foot cube within five feet of it with the magical darkness. So uh, my f- face spirit is going to be here. Okay. And um, um, I can we put can the beaver, beaver there for now. for now, just to make it easy if you want to drag that on. And now Vodak is covered in darkness, and so an attack with disadvantage Good. is going to be... Sorry, I still don't have a... There's no easy way to do this from roll 20, so I'll just roll 20. That's okay. I rolled a Kraken. Oh, but it's a disadvantage because of darkness. So an... 18 plus uh, my casting modifier, I think that might hit. 18 plus, yeah. 18 plus 7. So, yeah, 25 to Mm -hmm. hit. Um, And I do 5 plus 3 plus 3, so um, 11 points of piercing damage and 3 points of force damage. Gotcha. So, 14 to nice. Uh, yeah, a good strike upon this Bodak. Now, does uh, my Fey take damage for being close to the... It does. As does Saran. You take Saran, you take five points of necrotic damage when you ended your turn um, from being within its aura. Fair enough. Of annihilation. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, Fey takes five name. points of necrotic damage. Five points aura of, of annihilation. Do we know how That's big it's That's a good band name. Is. No? No. Uh, you just know that you're within it. Damn. It ain't visible, unfortunately. You feel it, though. And that's Nether's turn, yes? That's Nether's turn. Moriah. Um, well, I can't see the Bodak anymore, so I will... Uh, oh, do I seem to be within the effect of uh, Bodak Horseman? You don't feel icky, no. Okay, great. Um, so I'll turn my attention instead to the uh, skeleton uh, next to Sarayan, and I'm. Just <laughs> insults. Um, I, your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of cow shit. <laughs> uh, fish a smock. Uh, gotcha. Um, wisdom saves. Yeah. Mm, I am unwise. I will take that damage. All right. And uh, let's see here. And you have disadvantage. On my next attack. Yeah. Cool. All right. Back to the top of the round. Oh, Melvin, I think I'm going to back the... up a little bit. Sorry. I, uh, Noted. Where yeah. is the door? Right in where... front of uh, okay. Inaris. Um, I'm going to and... scoochie past her. <laughs> Since we're at the top of the round, as you guys see the, um, there are carvings all along the walls where you are here, um, depicting scenes of the sea, most of them inane, um, none of the uh, intense drowning motifs that you saw earlier. But at the top of the round, as this combat and blood is beginning to spill, they begin to shift around. Melvin, would you please, um, Roll a d6 as Umberly's influence begins to make itself manifest. Roll the two. All right. Where if I age and again? <laughs> what? If I so age another is, eight years. So <laughs> the the um, the 
which I also read you can pronounce it bass reliefs. <laughs> it's, a, it's a legitimate American pronunciation. Uh, on the uh, walls begin to shift and depict a scene called the sundering of the wave mother. The images of this bas relief shift with jagged violence. A pier is depicted on the walls at, with a noble lighthouse at one end. Then an enormous crashing wave makes contact with the building, sundering it midway up and sending the beacon of safety crashing into the sea. All creatures within the winding way now have negative four to their armor class. Mm. That including me and Saray and all? All creatures. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know if it was just the corridor or... What is the no, winding the, way? Um, yeah. Actually, That's it does not affect Mariah or um, Inaris. Um, I did want to clarify, um, is this a square that I can stand in? If I like, press um, myself up You have to climb on top of the brazier, kind of. Um. Uh, if you wanted, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say you need to squeeze to get past her, but standing in this square is going to be um, a little toasty. Not burn your bum. Okay. I guess not. All, All right. right, now it is What's Melvin's that? turn. I don't like that. Um, okay, well, uh, I guess um, I cannot see Bodak, right? Because he's in darkness now. Where Bodak goes in the initiative order, this might not be the most useful thing. We'll see. We can make it work. Um, I will... Uh, I have to see. Yes, I have to see for that. Do that. I guess I will uh, fire off a firebolt at Bodak. Okay. Um, at disadvantage because I cannot see him. Um, and I'm going to use my inspiration to cancel that out. Okay. Go uh, ahead. Oh, 12 to hit. 12 is a hit. Oh, thank God. Not be normally, but he is sundered. Nice. 16 points of fire damage. Okay. It doesn't deal as much fire damage as you would expect, but he does take damage. Not like that. All right. Anything else from Melvin? I'm going to back up. Can I get into this corner? Uh, yes. Or is the door, like, open into that space? Uh, no, you could. You would have to squeeze past an heiress, but you could do it. Uh, you're um, just I'm just going to go the corner here. of the door. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You feel your mage armor mending itself as you step out of this oh, good. winding way. Thank you. Uh, all right. Bodak's turn is going to step out of the darkness and turn to the summoned creature that has been assailing it. And yeah, withering gaze it. Please make a constitution saving throw. Very well. I have rolled a 19. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, take 11 points of necrotic damage. <laughs> and it starts looking around uh, again at all of you on your turns. Um, Inaris. Turns. Sweet. All right. So, shoot it. Shoot it. Should I shoot it with an arrow? Yep. Shoot her. Arrow, or do we think fire? Arrow. Uh, fire did not do very well against it. Um, I got told it did. You could that... try like radiant if you've got it. You could try turn undead also got divine word of radiance radiance erupts from you range is five feet i won't get to it so let i'm looking at my my turn undead because i've not used it yet so i don't know what to do um yes um, so turn undead has a um longer is a pretty long range okay it's 30 feet. I think you would have to step into the room in to order to hit, the, yeah. to hit the Bodak, but um, it could work. 
Alright, so I am currently 40 feet from him, so I will sneakily creep in just far enough to put me within range. And then I'm going to do my turn undead. Are you averting your eyes as you walk towards it? Yes. Okay. Twenty feet from me right there. I think. All right. Let's do my channel divinity turn undead. Very cool. I'm doing a fast read on it. I've never used it before. It's a great feature. Means you're fighting undead. With an action, you present your holy symbol, which is a raven. When some windows wisdom saving throws. Yes, indeed. Wisdom saving throw. Sweet. Okay, I'm using it. So Bodak Horseman needs to make a. Bodak has a five. Centaur <laughs> skeletons. I have an 11, and then the one fighting Serayan has a 17, manages to not be turned. The others are indeed turned. Ooh. Turned. Turned. Yes. Mm. The others get turned. They're yeah. turned. All right. Very cool. Uh, I think that is that all I can do on my turn, I think? Yeah. Uh, that is your action. You, If you have a bonus action, you can do something. Spare the dying, heal a word, shield of faith. You can take a bonus action. So, can I dash away if I use cunning action? Yeah. Uh, yes, dash you are there. within. Dash away. Uh, range, <laughs> dash, but... away dash away. Dash away. Y'all. Bye. Bye bye. You, you could Get disengage out. and potentially step back. One, two, three, four, five, six. You could take two steps back if you wanted. Okay, let you me. take the disengage action. Yes, disengage and GTFO. Okay. All right, very good. Undead. All right, Freon. She can't take the disengage action, can she? Uh, bonus action uh, with bonus cunning action. action. Oh, bonus gotcha. disengage. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, so, Preon, are you averting your gaze this turn? No. Is it correct okay. that um, if we hit turned creatures, they are yes. not turned anymore, so we should focus uh, the the one that is not turned? Yeah. Prion, please make a constitution saving throw. Advantage, as I've got protection versus undead? Uh, not for this. Okay. I rolled a 16 plus 6, 22. 22. Okay. Um... Uh, you are fine. Okay. So what you're saying is you don't want me to hit this? Hit, hit the thing that's not turned. Okay. I'll move there then. My. If my seagull comes in and goes out, is that still okay? Does it take necrotic? Does that would that take necrotic damage? Yes, it would. Okay, I will leave it there then. Okay, I attack that one in front of me. Oh wow. That hits. Really? Yes. ACs are lowered in here. 13 damage. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Wow. Another hit. About 10 damage. Okay. I'm gonna action surge. Nice. And hit again. Ooh. <laughs> what is that roll, beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. 20, and that's for 20 damage. Oof. And then a 22 to hit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, nice another rolls. nine damage. It had nine hit points left. That was an amazing series of blows. Fighters, I gotta just, fight. One, two, three, four, just over and over again, battering this thing to the ground, and it falls into a pile of bones. 
good stuff. Uh, so ending my... I'm going to take damage from it regardless, aren't I? Seems, yeah. yeah, as you've ended your turn, you've been taking damage in its aura. Okay, I'll step there then. Finish my route. Okay, uh, take five points in necrotic damage as you end your turn. Sarayan, are you averting your eyes? You be a brave boy like Prion or avert your eyes? No, I'm going to be a brave boy. <laughs> okay, make a constitution <laughs> saving throw. But seriously, make your decision uh, on your own. No, I want to be a brave boy. Okay. You can't up to Annie like that and then expect me to not be a brave boy. Okay, yeah. Go for it. I like it. You're brave such a brave boy. You're all at five. What's Plus, the total? Um, could I roll my d6 after that? Or into the yep. four? Hell yeah. Uh, okay, so the five, though, for... And it's a wisdom save? Con. Or Constitution. Con. Con. Okay, so seven, and then I'm gonna roll my d6 because maybe I'm waffling a little bit on wanting to be a brave boy. Okay. Um, but you know, the dice tell a story and I rolled a six. So that's 13 total. Okay, very good. Um, it's, that was a good decision. Um, you take 14 points of psychic damage. You do not drop to zero hit points, <laughs> which is what your original roll would have done. Oh. Ah, Saran is a brave boy. And that's, uh, you can uh, continue your turn. Oh, you I would child. love to do that. I would love to continue my turn. Um, so what I'm going to do is but this means that I don't have to roll a disadvantage right on my attacks. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Dope. So, um, Serene is going to take a step towards this other Minotaur skeleton boy, girl. I don't know. They. I. I want to be with them. So I can't see it. Anyway, but little little long sword action. Okay, long sword it. Yeah. Uh, uh, 21. Or nine? Hits. They both well, hit. it's not a disadvantage. No, but they both hit. They would both hit. Both Perfect. Hit. Awesome. So, seven plus nine, 16. And we've got to roll with these six as well, remember? Damage. Oh, yeah, that's right, because I got my cutie little. Yeah, roll your D4. D4. Yeah. My cutie it's no little. no longer turned. D4. Current? It ain't Ooh. no, it ain't four. turned no more. And again, it ain't turned no more. And again, yeah, you yeah, got for each for hit. Each hit. Oh! Okay, so six. Twenty-two. Yay! All right, six Back. points of damage. Very nice. Twenty-two. Uh, so it has. Gotcha. Cool. Yep. A good pair of hits from Sarayan. Hey. Uh, and anything else? No. I. Uh, Please take five points of necrotic damage as you end your turn in the Aura of Annihilation. <laughs> Minotaur Skeleton is going to retaliate, swing back against you, Saray, and I have a critical hit, unfortunately. No! For, um... Ooh. It's a hurt. It's, it's a big hurt. one. Yeah. Pain. Big one. Lots of pain. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh... Yeah. It could have been, it could have been um, a bit worse, but uh, 31 points of slashing damage. L O L, you say it could have been worse. Because. How are you doing that, Duran? Uh, you downsies? <laughs> I'm down. Never. Uh -huh. Bye. Um. Nether moves to here. I don't wanna die! Will that give her line of sight on the Minotaur? Yes. Alright, she will. Partial cover, send but it's still pretty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She will send two Eldritch Blasts at it. Go for it. First one goes. It's AC 15 for 8 points uh -huh. of force damage. Gotcha. Second one. 
hits AC9 for two points of force damage. Nine hits. All right, two points of force damage. Very cool. Good. And as for... And... Um, does Nether have a sense that Prion's about to attack? Um... Uh, yeah, Prion. What are you looking like you're gonna do? Well, he's just seen Saran go down, so that would be his next step. Nah, I got her. No, I mean go towards oh. that creature. So if you wanna darkness this one again, you can. Um. So the problem is, is where it's it is. Um. Yeah, the initiative order. Where it is the initiative. So, uh, Flogger is going to hold an action um, to move the Sphere of Darkness, the uh, Ball of Darkness, to wherever the Bodak ends up. At the end of its turn? The Bodak's turn? uh, uh, Yeah, at the end of its turn. Gotcha. Cool. Done. And it, you, uh, not you, but it takes five points of necrotic damage at the end of its turn. Got it. Mariah. Um, I will bonus action cast healing word on Sarayan for five Sarayan points life of healsies. Turns to you with a tune um, of five points. And then I checked with my little handy dandy uh, ruler here on uh, roll twenty, and I too should have line of sight to uh, cowboy numero dos. Yeah. Uh, so I will um, tell it um, shittiest hit I've ever seen. <laughs> shittiest <laughs> for hit. another <laughs> yeah. Shittiest hit. For <laughs> oh, like ah, that was a natural bad. nineteen, unfortunately for an eighteen. Oh, well. um, it wasn't a particularly inspired insult. DME, I have um, Fargolt moved to here. Yes. Thank you. All right, Melvin. Uh, well, I've, sorry, I've just seen... quickly before Melvin starts. Massive thank you to Snake Spinner for ten dollars donated. That is, he wants two inspirations, two t- d twenty inspirations, and a massive oh, thank you to round. I Pixie. Think that's a fair time to do it. Yeah, that's why I did it. Yeah, and massive thank you for Pixie as well. Three hundred bits, and that's a d six inspiration. Okay, d twenty to. I Freon, have a d twenty. I'll right. happily take uh, the d6, d6 though. Go for it. Nether d20. Uh, I will take it. I get a d20. Thank you. <gasps> Thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. Awesome. Yeah, oh, Melvin. Cracking, nice. Um, well, that uh, firebolt didn't really work on on Bodak over there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that instead over to. Uh, the uh, cow person thing Go for and it. Uh, point at him with my quill and shoot a fire bolt at him mm-hmm. it what happens when you combine a bull and a skeleton 12 hits you get a bulletin uh, <laughs> 15 points of fire damage Ooh, a big scorching hit there it recoils from anything else um. No. This That'll be bull it. Is on fire. Bodak's turn. Uh, flipping fire, a uh, coin here. Fire. Kraken is Prion gets the gaze of its of death. Or is it not uh, running away? It's running away, right? Yeah. Oh, it is turned. Turned You're right. Big boy better be running. Oh, so, and that will trigger Flargles. Flargles. Uh, darkness. She creates a. Uh, a sphere of darkness over the what happens? It ends its turn there in the darkness. That's funny. Okay, cool. Inaris. This boat acts in darkness. Darkness, darkness. Darkness. Okay, so let's see here. Bodak Horseman's running away, and I do not want to interfere. I want him to stay in the corner. I'm going to attack the cow the cowboy. Uh-huh. Cow, the cow thing, the cow shit. I'm going to use my short bow. All right, roll an attack. Come on, come on, come on. 
come on. Really? Piece of crap. 12? It's still going to hit. It's HC. It's going to hit. hit. Yes. Okay. Everyone's HC is pooped. Well, let's get some damage. AC. I said HC. So I is that going... HC was. It, yeah. It proc sneak. Sneak attack? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's 13 points of damage. Even though she is prone, she is conscious and threatening. And it is looking on its last leg after that 13 damage. Awesome. Anything else from an heiress? Uh, that, I think, will be all that she does at the moment. Breon. I will attack the bovine from where I stand. Okay. Hit him. Yes. For 11 damage. There's two hit points left. And so you slay the bovine. Move to here. And I will second wind. Okay. So nine. So Rayan, you are upon the ground, but you are alive. The Rayan comes back to gasping for breath. Am I aware that it was Claire? Yeah. What? So the I first take thing you heard points. upon coming back to life was her song. So. Her I'm sorry, who? Singing. Who? God damn it! <laughs> uh, oh yeah, DM, I have got a second attack. <laughs> you do. I, I thought you were purposefully not using it. So. It's fine. It's how you first Mar- knew me. Mariah Claire. I, um, yes. Oh. Claria. <laughs> Clara- that sounds like a disease. <laughs> I'll throw my hooked net at it. Oh, okay. God, the is, it, uh, is it disadvantage? Yep. 14. 14 will hit as you hear the um, net wrap around it. Love you. Take seven uh, piercing. Okay, and it <laughs> is no longer turned. But it does have Clariah. It doesn't yeah. seem to take the full damage, but it is still restrained. Darkness. This all right. girl is Mariah. Um, <laughs> so all right, that means we can't make to, any attacks. Uh, uh, so at the end of your turn, still take five points of necrotic, please. Would it? And Sarayan, you can continue your turn. Sorry. Mm, it's totally fine. Uh, we need to heal. We'll get out. You hear my melodious tune. Ooh. That's what I imagine. It's just riffing. <laughs> so you just have to, meant to stand up, it takes. Um. <laughs> Ooh, it's scatting now? Damn. I'm taking okay. a jazz class. <laughs> um, so, what I would like to do is do some lay on hands action. So, Serene. Yes, selfishly, absolutely. <laughs> so, you should uh, Serene, come out into the hallway and do that. Serene crawls through the door <laughs> out into the hallway. You can only make it uh, thirty feet, so or sorry, fifteen feet after standing up. Okay, so does that get me outside? It should, right? It gets you to here. Oh, beans. That's that's probably outside of its its aura, though. So. Okay, great. That was one. That was five, ten, fifteen. Next to. Yes. Next to Anaris, yeah. Anaris, okay. Um, Anything Gandalf. else for Sarayan besides that movement and that action? Uh, no. Do what? I need to tell you how much I'm using, or are you you're fine without that info? I'm fine. Uh, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just yeah, I'll just keep it to up. myself. That's private. Right. Okay, thank you. Nether. Medical. It's HIPAA. Medical record. Yeah, <laughs> HIPAA. HIPAA. <laughs> you're not allowed to know. Um, HIPAA violation. Yeah. All right, uh, Nether moves oh, into the room. Sorry, pause one second. Vamp for me, please. I'll be right back. One second. Quick, Chelsea, go, go, Bring go. Your hands together. <laughs> yes, but I have some fire. <laughs> Chelsea's message me. Says I really need to pee, so I'm, I'm sending her gifts of waterfalls and. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> Let's riff. Let's riff. Let's riff. Let's riff about Kraken totally Dice riffing. and the fact we got a giveaway going oh. on. Yeah. 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 Hey guys. So Kraken has some new sets that are really pretty. Um, personally, I just went and bought the Amethyst Black Magic set. That that is it's gorgeous on their website. It's one of their new sets. 
Uh, I it's also... all like purple and black and glittery. So bought a new, the two new sets, but the other one that I got is their pride set. Nice. Did you use is... a code, Liz? I did. I used our code, get stupid at checkout, and I got an extra 10% off of my order after the very generous fourth of or Christmas in July, even though it's August, <laughs> uh, sale that is like 60% off. So these dice were already, these beautiful pride dice were already 60% off. Um, and I feel like, unfortunately, like my camera does not do them justice, but yeah, they're very glittery, they're very beautiful. Do this one justice. That one, it does that justice. Yeah. Sean, do you have your enormous dice nearby? Your enormous die? <laughs> Don't ask oh my God, about is enormous, enormous dice. Is <laughs> Hang on. Like, you know what they say Sean, about Sean, put yours really close dice. to the camera. Big hands? It, put yours really yeah. close to the camera. And I'll move mine away. I was just trying to make them the same size. <laughs> Those are identical. A Don't quote me on that, but they're play. identical. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hi, Peter. All right. Uh, Welcome back. Nice viewer. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. It is from the Renaissance Fair. The Renaissance. The Renaissance. Oh, <laughs> like me, it. nerd, right. no. Nether. Oh, that's right. It's my turn. All right, Nether. Um, Steps and she. Two more bolts of Eldritch Blast coming out. Um, and disadvantage. Both of them rolling with disadvantage as she shoots into the darkness. To the darkness with you. Cast magic missile. What at? The darkness. I have rolled a 10 to hit. Unfortunately, 10 is not going to hit. All right. The second bolt comes flying out. Is it prone? No. No. I have rolled a 17 to hit. That hits. Five points of force damage. Noted. And then after my turn, <laughs> attacks with her um, sword tentacles as she slashes at it um, at disadvantage. Um, it's ah, restrained. It's, like net. it's, it's restrained. restrained. It would be a oh. straight roll. You're right. Yeah. So That's a good the point. Kraken. <gasps> I rolled a Kraken. It's a crit, and I will add that three points of force from your first attack as well, Nether. Oh, cool. Thank you. Even on ranged attacks, that works? It's restrained. I guess it would. Of course. All right. So, uh, so by, um, <laughs> so this is going to be five... Um, but I need to roll another die. Here. So, a total of... Eight... Plus two on the uh, uh, slicing, slice, slashing damage. And then the force damage is... 2d6, so seven. Okay. Uh, seven slashing damage, you said? So, no, uh, eight plus so eight. So, 11 points of slashing damage and seven okay. points of force damage. Is it, it's not magical, right? It's just a, it's a summoned creature? Or does uh, it specify it's magical? I don't think the attacks are magical. Let me double check. Okay. Pay maze and other attacks equals uh, sorts of melee weapon. So, the force damage obviously is magic, but this piercing uh -huh. is not. Okay, cool. Or sla uh, piercing damage. Noted. It's looking rough. And then she keeps darkness on it. Okay, the creature takes five. You take five more points of necrotic damage to the summon. Okay. And Mariah's up. Hmm. Hmm. It hears a horrible little melody. And needs to you need to be able to see it to, to do this? Oh, no, it just has to hear me. Oh. oh, that was a really shitty roll. Oh, it's probably better than what I could shoot it, though. All right. Body once told me. <laughs> All alone Amazing. in the moonlight. I love that song. Uh, it's actually a beautiful wisdom. song. I love that song. I've got a it's seven. Just, I'll take that damage. Take seven points of psychic damage. Done. Cool. Uh, we were both young when we just met. And then, um, just just as I as as I'm kind of standing there and I've I've sort of sung down the hallway at it. Um, just as a point of curiosity, I'm gonna pull that um, 
a holy symbol out of my pouch. I just kind of uh-huh. look at it and see whether it's doing anything right now. Right now, not much. Yeah, interesting. Kind of, kind of just hold it out towards the hallway. I could just like see if anything happens. With energy a bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, they're like dowsing rods. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin, we're going to need to have a look-see at this one. Uh, Bojack Horseman's dead. Melvin's turn. Bojack, no! Uh, well, I guess I'll um, go for another... Uh, well, I'm going to try another Mind Sliver. Um, let's see if it can make another intelligence saving throw. Do you have to be able to see it? Um, shoot, you're right. Do you want my crossbow? Yep. No, I can just do a firebolt. That's fine. <laughs> it's just a straight roll in that case. Yeah. Yes. Cool. 17 to hit. This boat acts that on hits. Fire. Cool. Uh, not a great roll. Seven points of fire damage. All right. On two Half D10. of seven is three, which will kill it. <gasps> oh, you're about to dab, Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> a dabra. And yeah. that will end Flargle, the Flargle combat. Flargle jumps on you, um, Prion, and <laughs> hugs you. I pet it. <laughs> I see you're becoming a Kraken priest. Wait, what is... I feel like I've missed something. <laughs> All right, friends. It is almost giveaway time. It is time after that. Uh, we will pick up the conversation investigation after this, but we are going to go on to a quick little breaky break. All right, so resuming the session after fighting these these skeletal forms and the undead form of the Bodak have been destroyed. Get <laughs> All around you, the shifting bas-reliefs sort of create this persistent uneasiness through this area of the winding way. So, so uh, as, as the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sean. Fargo has latched on to um, Prion, um, and the tentacles are sort of hugging you. And Prion, if you have any valuables, um, they are being sought for by the tentacles. I take an attack of opportunity. <laughs> no, I like if it's trying to go for my uh, for my pouch, I'll uh, try to hold it at arm's length. <laughs> it holds on to your Never. your arm. <laughs> try to go for my money. Oh, it likes shiny things. I think. Um, speaking of shiny, Brianna is like so... entirely shiny. No, I am very shiny. <laughs> it's true. He's very shiny. Um, it, speaking of shiny things, as I I hold up the amulet, I'm looking over to Melvin. I'm kind of like holding it towards the door, the entryway to the secret passage. Pull it back, secret edges. Pull it back, and like I assume as it gets closer, it like sort of like vibrates a little bit. It, you feel a thrumming of power as mm. it approaches the winding way. Yes. How much, Melvin? Power? Are you okay, Mariah? I sense a thrumming of power. <laughs> oh, um, well, do you want me to identify it? Yeah, uh, that would be good because it occurred to me belatedly that, you know, leader, leader man, I generalize gesture back towards where the dead bodies are, um, wore this and he was the only one who could pass through here safety, safely, right? So maybe this has something to do with it. Oh, that that would make sense, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. Well, here, here I, I'll, I'll I'll take a seat, DM, and pull out my book, and okay. I will um, take the amulet and cast identify. Are you still staying in this main room? Yes. The the with the curtains. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Any? What is everyone else doing? I'm gonna listen Hang at this up. door. Hey, make a perception check. can't hear anything but Melvin mutter words of madness I rolled a two utter silence still is the grave so much lost I'm probably actually humming unless there's danger I'm probably humming so you hear a combination of Melvin muttering and 
weird little half melodies. That probably doesn't make it better. <laughs> Speaking of which. <laughs> All right. Um, Nether comes in and gathers away from Prion. Flargle hops onto her back and she sort of wears her like uh, a shawl. Aww. Hmm. Dangerous and an accessory. <laughs> We've all got that one friend we can wear like a shawl. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Wow. I'm really sorry. Wow. There are friends and then there are accessories. Well, that's... That's more real than you. Social accessories. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay. Oh, you're back. <laughs> okay. Hey, we're in a temple of Umberly, guys. It's serious, by the way. There's motifs all over of lighthouses being crushed to the ground under waves. You can see them subtly moving. It's like they're slowly in the absolute slowest of motion crumbling into the waves carved in the stone around these rooms. Did you just yeet your feel, cat off of you? <laughs> you feel very surely the sundering of the wave mother. Um, how impressed is Sarayan with the reliefs and architecture. Is there um, anyone she can complain to about that? <laughs> actually, Sarayan, they are, um, well, the fact that they're moving is really impressive, and yeah. the carvings are exquisite. Mm. Is there anyone I can congratulate about that? <laughs> I think we killed You can congratulate Umberly. So. Where is Umberly? Oh, we'll find her. Um, okay. <laughs> Umberly. I need to no congratulate Sarayan, this Umberly. Is the is the um, the chaotic evil goddess of the sea. Um, oh. But like the polar feared to and respected persona. by many sailors. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, it's really too bad that this this place is so beautiful when Umberly is so evil. You could sanctify it. I don't I don't think that would be appropriate. I mean, I mean are don't they people all dead? do that all the time? Nether kind of looks at you and says, Isn't that what you do though? Sanct sanctify things? Well, holy warriors, you go and you find yeah, religions you don't agree with and break them. I'm just trying to be more open minded. <laughs> I slightly um, cough as <laughs> she says that. I mean, that's been how it's been done in the past, but I just, I feel like moving forward, we should try to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. hmm. I mean, if they're all dead, I might as well. And oh, she begins. I'm going <laughs> to open start. this door. Oh. Uh, not, please not until we're done with the amulet. Oh. Wait, no sanctification till we're done with no, the uh, No, no door opening. We want to see whether so this I is going to So I can sanctify right now then? How long is it going to take? I have, a okay. spell, I have a spell going as well. It's like 10 uh, minutes, it's right? 10, 10 minutes to, to ritually cast identify. Yeah. That goes my spell then. No! Okay, never mind. I'll wait. No, it just. The, I, Melvin's magic is going to take 10 minutes. So I might as well sanctify this place then. All right. So we've got with, a, with a ritual identify going on. Um, we've got a door going on. Um, what what is? It sounds like we're waiting. Um. What is Saray and sanctification? That sounds like it's. <laughs> uh. So wouldn't it be like ceremony? It's an hour That's cast an hour. for that. Ah, beans. Ah, oh, forget it. Never mind. They can all go to hell. We'll see you That's Monday right. nights in Avernus. Spoken like a true paladin. <laughs> <laughs> they can all go to hell. Oh. All right. So what does Melvin it, see? It sounds like Melvin, uh, your identify goes off and you find, you learn the properties of this medallion. Um, 
anyone else would like to mm. read this, please feel free. Well, then, um, would you like to go ahead? So I'll read it. Oh. When when you're here. So, and, you got to read the last magic item, Melvin. That's fair. We have yeah. volunteers. Saran, I will go ahead. Explain to you, Saran, feel... and she can yeah. read it. As you're oh taking God, notes, this is what you Melvin, write down. Thank you so much. All right. Um, just because education should be accessible to everyone, I'm going to tell you what this is. Um, the golden symbol of Umberly. While in the winding way, you may present this symbol as an action and recite a prayer to Umberly which I wouldn't suggest, I'd suggest persona, but that's not the point here. Make a DC 15 religion check as part of this action. On a success, choose from the following results. One, re-roll the effect of Umberly's influence in the winding way. Two, until the end of your next turn, you may invoke the wave mother's name in order to have the effects of the winding way affect only certain creatures. Choose between Umberly's resolve or Umberly's wrath. A, this is a two A, Umberly's resolve, only you and allied creatures are affected by the magic of the winding way. To be Umberly's wrath, only hostile, only creatures hostile to you are affected by the magic of the winding way. If you fail the religion check associated with this action, the intended effect still occurs, but you take 2d6 necrotic damage and must make a dc12 wisdom saved or be affected by temporary madness. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. Well, does anyone have a chance? Persona wouldn't do that to anyone. I'm just saying. You don't have to go with Umberly. Uh, does anyone here have a chance in hell of being able to make that religion check reliably? You need to pr pray to Umberly, no? I have a plus three. I have a plus seven to religion checks. I've, I've read a lot about religious ceremonies and stuff, although I don't have much practical experience. But do you really want to pray words, to right? Umberly? I mean, not really, but it, if, if it'll prevent things like this from happening to us again. Don't do it. We got through this. We can protect it, you. You just have to say the words, right? You don't have to mean it. He's got a point. She still may hear you. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. She hears also, us what? She well, I, I don't fixes the problems for us. I Words mean, have like, power. I know that the the gods exist and everything, but I don't really follow any of them. So, I think it'd probably be fine for me to do it instead of, one to? of the people who like gets their power well, from a god. It's not causing we us don't any know issue. what other we don't know what other shit's gonna go on in there. Y'all had your you know a whatever the in game awareness of AC is <laughs> AC dropped. Like, there could be other really bad effects in there. And having the ability to swap who they affect or change what the effect is in our back pocket, that's not a bad idea. Right, but it also may send him mad. Yeah, and Umberly is not good. Then it's a we have last a resort. Giving him help on his checks. I can help him. And she turns to um, Talise. Can't you help him? Um, Talise says that technically she could, but she won't. But she will she? Will not. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. As far Classic as Talise. So there's a weird. As far as the relationship between the deities go, it's kind of weird. Oddly enough, Persona, while firmly allied against Umberly, is probably almost more likely to agree to work adjacent to her more so than Volker. Volker, who was a human sailor who resisted the grasp of Umberly fiercely and violently throughout his life. Um, Volker being a younger god. Um, Umberly and Persana both being older. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. Well, how about we keep it in our back pocket as an option? Hopefully shit won't hit the fan. Hopefully we don't have to use it. But if it came down to Melvin using it versus one or more of us dying to whatever other threats may reside in the winding way, then I'd rather he use it. Right. If he's willing. Perfect. Makes perfect sense to me. I mean, I can always pray to Persona to help you out. 
if you do go crazy. Yeah. I've got no issues with it. I just, I just thought we were past it. But if we gotta go deeper and it's still gonna affect us, then yes. I have a feeling that this is going gonna go on for a while. This is the way. This is the way. Fishman. Moving on. Um, so yeah, how about you just keep that in your pouch, Melvin, all right? I'm going to put it around my neck. All right. Hey, Frodo. Um, Fine. Do you Shall enter open the door? winding way, Melvin? Even the smallest part. I can um, still see you. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll, I'll walk in. So it's been a few, about 10 minutes. Um, please, you feel a thrum of power emanate from the amulet. Please roll a d6. Two. <laughs> the magic does not change. Okay. So that's a minus four to all easy. feel like you have your armor. It's weird. Those of you wearing full plate, you uh, sometimes feel something ugh, loose and you think like a strap is kind of undone that you have to constantly recheck. Melvin, you see the your mage armor, the magic is fading, almost faded and static-like. Um, those of you wearing things. leather, it feels like thin, supple cloth. So, yeah. So Guess this what? would be My something AC that the medallion would be used to make it so it only affects our enemies? Hi. If you want to use Correct. it now, use it now. Are C and enemies? Until the end of your okay. next turn. Is Until what the, the end of my next does. turn. Yeah. It's Got a single it. turn okay. thing, and it risks 2d6 so. damage every time I do it okay. if I fail the check. Gotcha. So. Oh. Oh, you go. Well, why do we cast. Why do we have guidance cast on you right now as we open the door? Well, let me move into the room first of all, just in case. So who can cast guidance on Melvin? I think it's just I can, I think. You can Elise would be able to, I think. But Elise won't. won't do it because it's yeah. unbelievable. Well no, she won't use the amulet. Will she cast guidance on Melvin? Guidance. If the is idea is to artificer. use the amulet, probably not. <laughs> Mm. Could I use? Mm, I don't know. This at are you surface. trained in? Re, are you trained in religion? Me? Is uh, no, is no. um? You're not okay. Okie doke. Melvin's definitely off. Well, this but my question was going to be. Sorry. You no, you're yeah. Go ahead. Um. So my question was going to be whether or not a spell like protection against evil and good would be useful. That's a big one context. though. Don't we don't want to use that unless there's definitely a threat. Okay. I, that was my it, only I'll thought. be fine. Oh. It, it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Mm. My my only fear is that I don't have a ton of hit points, so Do you oh, need good. healing? Yeah. No, I've I've got enough that even if I roll max damage, I'm not gonna go down. It's just generally my max hit points is not very much. So That's fair. <laughs> like he's a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, right? <laughs> Or right. he's a twiggy um, boy. Like a okay. Could I instead do a warding bond and just stay close to Melvin? Sure. Yeah. I will cast warding bond and stay close to How long does it you. last? Let an hour. Long time. Double check. That's nice. It lasts That's one great. hour. Yeah. So awesome. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. So, and the this. door stands there ready to be opened. I will open it, yep. revealing a hallway. The winding way, the name of it becomes readily apparent. Prion, as you step forward, do you guys shine a light into the winding way as you continue? <clears throat> Heather will need it to be able to see, so the light is going from her uh, little shell on her shoulder. So you are bringing a light into all of these areas. Yes? She has to. Okay. 
If that's a yes, Prion, you look right and see a trip wire across this hallway. You look up and see there is something rippling about the floor as if it's not quite right, as if maybe the floor there doesn't really exist. We got traps in here. Sounds like a job for Nene. Can I see anything in front of me? Uh, the pathway continues to a solid wall at the end. I go and stand here and look left and right then and look for more tripwires. Is anyone coming with him? Nether, no, I'll, I'll it depends if, 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 if there's light or not, because he has minus five passive in the dark. Um, yeah. Nether can Actually, me, uh, Nether, what Nether does is Nether um, hands the shell to Priya. Okay. Then looking up Prion, you see another tripwire up here. And that's it. Um, are the tripwires such that they can easily be stepped over, or do we need to go through the process of um They can be them? carefully stepped over. Okay. And then that's an, is that another uh, spot of floor that's a little eh. yes shimmery and you're shimmery. up For what? I forgot that I was muted <laughs> well, do we... we don't have to disarm the trip wires if we can move... guarding something or they're just there in case somebody takes a wrong turn hard to say I mean, they're in three of four different directions, so chances are there's all sorts of things in this maze that either, you know, help or hinder you. I suggest we go the way that's not trapped. All right. Well, should we Creon, at least check? Christ? No. We'll come back around if we don't find anything down this hallway. I will look right then. South. Okay. <clears throat> um, looking around, none of the floor traps that you've been spotting before seem evident. I will use the trident just to poke the floor in front of me while I, while I move south. Clink, 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 clink. Kind of just tings off of the <clears throat> ground as you move forward. We do have a 10 foot pole as well that we found in the other room. If you don't want to be using your weapon for that. That's all. See two doors on the corners. I will listen at the doors. Absolute silence. Hand out and holds on to Melvin as Doll goes flying down this hall and just wants to check is this a real door or is it just there? to trick people into trying to go around this corner. What is Doll's passive perception? Doll's passive perception is 13. Okay. How does she investigate the door? Um, sorry. Uh, he will come down and take his little sword and stick it into the keyhole and see if it feels like a normal keyhole in the door. Okay, uh, make a perception check. Alrighty. That didn't work. Let's try that again. Took me to the basic rules. Perception. There it is. Well, I rolled a one. We definitely need to come back and check this door. As Dahl is examining this door, um... Which or is it? It's it kind this of one? twisting, twisting the lock around. You said it's mm -hmm. a mimic. Sort of. 
Yeah, so it, you hear a snapping sound. And Dahl looks up as the ceiling is rapidly closing in above. Dahl um, and instantly appears back at the other side. Okay. Make a... Uh, all right. Two things. Dexterity saving throw from Dahl and a caster level check from you. Because it would be you who would have to call Dahl back. Well, if Dahl succeeds on the six dexterity saving throw, will I have to bring him back? Half damage on whatever is going to, on the falling Got of the it. stones. Okay. Whew. Dexterity saving throw. I'm going to use my inspiration on this. Wait, it's, wait, half damage or succeeds? Well, um, since the trap was triggered carefully if you succeed on both of these things doll will be able to be recalled but if you fail one of them doll will suffer half of the damage effects Which means from the doll trap. will die all right so uh, i'm going to use inspiration on the um on the dexterity saving throw so i rolled a 15 on that good and then a caster level check so that is a d20 plus four. So 13 to 17. Very well. Dahl is, is able to fly directly down at an incredibly fast speed. And she's about to, or he's about to just absolutely bludgeon himself on the floor, being chased by this heavy stone block. And at the moment of panic, you think in just an instant to recall him and he vanishes out of existence as a ton of stone crashes in front of this false door. And Dahl does not take the 8d8 damage from the track, from the trap. All right. So there's a loud sound. <laughs> Debris says, or Debbie says, I wonder what that was. What was that? <laughs> Can I tell y'all? I just flashed back to that time when uh, Cyborg got crushed by the elevator. <laughs> That's that was one. <laughs> wow, well, uh, here we're, uh, we're noticing time. like a theme here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was that? Something though? must be over there. We 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 best open the door and move on. Mm. Sorry. There's lots of traps here. Anaris, do you want to check the doors for traps? I'll give him a check. See if I see anything. Okay. Make an investigation check, Anaris. Ready? <laughs> Those are not the best. Melvin should do one. Step up. Investigation. Come on, come on, come on. Thank Ooh, you. 15. Uh, 15 is enough as you look between both of these doors, finding the angle to peer through the keyhole. You see both a tripwire set to spring a trap, and you see that behind both of these doors are giant loaded ballistas ready to blast <laughs> oh anyone who God. opened either. <laughs> that Last is thing. comical. This place wow. sucks! <laughs> if your Jesus. home isn't equipped with ballistas, do you really have home Holy security? Holy crap! You know what I mean? <laughs> So, Jesus. I don't think okay. we want to go through this door. Uh, I think we need to double check everything. There's a tiny part of me that wants to go in and like take the ballistas out and bring them back to our ship, but only a really, really tiny part of me. I mean, I mean, we could like open the, we could like lie prone on the ground and, and then open, open the, the doors. Door. Why don't we Melvin, we need to we go could... further back. You can't we, be we, in the line of fire. That's that's fair. Um, uh, we we could always come back here when we're done clearing the rest of the place and and take the ballistas. Then, great. It'd be a pretty big job. We might need to bring some people from from like the ship. Said, I'm not sure how prudent that is, or you know, high up on our I mean, to do list. I'm um, very strong and could assist, but Melvin, I'm worried about. Your concern is noted. Uh, what's that way? hallway? Dim. Keetal. 
another um another and, uh, uh door does it look as if this can be stepped over like if if i were to kind of like hug the corner and just sort of shimmy shimmy along could i yeah, step over you could this? if you move uh very carefully you can move around the squares of illusory floor okay Shall we pre on? Uh, off, yeah, after Mariah does that, I just poke the floor anyway with my. Yeah, so you, you see it with the illusory, your, your trident goes straight through the floor. Does it disarm the illusion? Mm -mm. It's still there, but you're very aware of it. No more aware of it than you are now, but you can point out to your friends oh, this is illusory. And um, you, they can clearly see that the floor is sort of shifting and unnatural. Okay. I will. How unnatural. When I so touched it with obviously the uh, the trident, did it flicker a bit? Could I see the bottom? Um. Yes. Uh. Spiky, very spiky. Okay. <laughs> About ten feet down. I dive in. Um. Uh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> I... Amazing. Okay, I step over with Mariah and again just with the light, pad the floor with the trident as I slowly go forward. Two of you move that way, you see what appears to be a enormous treasure <gasps> trove. Mm, check it for traps! <laughs> Are you worried about Inaris? She doesn't seem really... I think Melvin's probably the better one to investigate, is he not? Melvin and I can tag team it. It's fine. Um, and I'll be coming along to... <laughs> you're you're, you're muted, muted, but I can understand what you're saying there, Jail. But fur and fuzzy bears? Because that's totally what I was saying. Fuzzy, fuzzy fur bears. Yeah. Anyway. Is this Furbies? A, uh, is this real first? Melvin and I should check this out before we start picking up gold, but. Uh, Did Melvin I? And, and you and me. And Saran, because Lord I don't have forbid to... she well, ever uh, leave within five feet of him. No, I, it's because I, I cast a spell of protection on him. Doesn't it have like a range of like 60 feet? <laughs> is I don't he, think is so. he wearing a bell? It, it does, actually. <laughs> Have you oh. this, this warden bond? Have you put a bell it. on him? Well, then never mind. I don't care. <laughs> you do what you want. Go do whatever. I'm about to say that. Like I'm not hear even bell. mad. I'm not even mad. The bell's on my cat. Yeah, that's what I can hear. It. I was like, <laughs> have you called your cat Melvin? Um, no, her name is Stella, but I call her a Beanie oh, okay. for Stella Belly Jelly Bean. I will carefully step over the corner of this square Great, and I'll move just over stay, toward this room. Stay here, then. You, you, you can, oh, you come, can come. No, I don't want to anymore. It's fine. Go ahead. Well, what if we want you me. here? I'll stand near Prion. Stand by me. Push him in a trap while you're at it. Why? All right. I'm, I'm back hearing there. requests for an investigation check. Is that what yeah. it's yes. all boiling um, down to? I will help. Melvin. Thank you for the help. I needed it, apparently. Um, All right. That's a 12 There's plus 7 there. is 19. If you need this, I'll, I'll pull right out from the bag of holding a 10-foot uh, pole for Melvin to poke around things with. Oh, that, that, that would be perfect, actually. Thank you. Mary Poppins that. I'll yep. use the 10-foot <laughs> pole to <laughs> investigate this pile of gold <laughs> as you're looking around here it is a the most disappointing pile of gold you've ever encountered and that most of it is um, tin armor um swords made of wood painted silver same with all of the treasure this is quite a decoy it's it's not with that gold. as you are glancing around the room you also notice in the wall here is an indent 
that would indicate perhaps a secret passage. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Well, this is fucking depressing, I say to the group, but I just point at the pile. <laughs> well, it is still the only pile of gold I've ever seen, so it's still pretty impressive, even if it is fake. We have just coffers full of gold like that where I live. <laughs> So how about we take a detour over to your hometown and you can pay for the crew. Okay. Money's no object. Except for right now. Because I don't have any. (laughs) But my dad does. Um, Daddy. (laughs) On the the shell phone. The shell phone. (laughs) Um, Oh, yikes. Hi, Daddy. (laughs) So, um, I hired a crew, and apparently they need to be paid. This was all part of the pilgrimage experience. That's still my favorite. I have an image of her dad being a... King Triton from The Little Mermaid. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, obviously. Still my favorite concept for a warlock patron, though. Literally just like a rich father who gives you shit every, every time oh, you call funny. him up. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. Um, I'll I'll go investigate this thing in the wall. Help uh, you've you've investigated it oh, with okay. with that previous check. It's a it is, is a this um, real passage that you can um and I, I know how to open out it. of the way to pass through. What? Oh it's just like a push it open. Got it. Yeah. Uh is this door real? You touch it? No. How do you figure out? Okay, it's real? with the ten foot pole. I'm looking at it, first of all. Does it look real? You it, you are standing at it, and you're like, man, that's a door. Yep. Wow, that's if, a nice door. If I stand 10 feet off to the side and poke at it with the 10-foot pole, is it solid? Knock, knock, knock. Yep, it's real. Okay. Sounds real, at least. I didn't realize I was mute. It would be a really sophisticated program delusion, but that's doubtful. That's how I feel walking through like Lowe's, you know, they have the the aisles of doors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, so, that's the real, that's the, a door. The really <laughs> fucked up dungeon would be the one that has a secret door, but the secret door is trapped. The way you're supposed to actually go is through the real door. That would be diabolical. <laughs> you have two options in front of you. Well, you have many options, but um yeah. Um, I'd I'd like to examine the door and see if there are any traps. Um, your previous investigation, there, there'd be nowhere to fit a tripwire on this. And okay. both the secret and the real door? Yeah, the the real door okay. looks like like all the other doors you've seen. They, they both seem safe, looks like. Secret door. Open secret. the secret door. Secret door. We'll need someone stronger than me to open it. I'm yeah, really strange. strong. I could do it. Get your muscly asses over here. Kush, 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 kush. <laughs> With a clanking and then a <laughs> shoulder laid into the side, um, <laughs> Thrain pushes the door open and it reveals a passage extending forward and then two doors at the end of it. There is this continued um, feeling that your armor just wants to fall off this off your shoulders, like you are just not protected the way you wish you were. But hmm. there you are. You're left with does two my options. does my uh-huh. armor look the same as it has before? Because it 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 feels different. Everything's really fucky in here. What All is right. fucky? <laughs> oh come on! Even I know that one. Sorry again. You're uh, a little more worldly wise than I am. No offense. None taken. Is that it? It's <laughs> no offense till no offense taken till you said no offense. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what fucky means. <sighs> I've been called plucky. Uh, this dungeon it's is like not that. plucky. It's like that. It's uh, DM. Are these three <coughs> things supposed to be Six. chests? They are, um, <coughs> and they were propped open. You know, oh, okay. it's uh, yeah, obviously. Fake. I really hope there's an actual treasure hoard somewhere because that's depressing. Turns yeah. out the uh, giant pile of fake gold coins is actually just a mimic. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Chow, but Chow is not a mimic. 
Ciao. Definitely not. Ciao. Someone not. go down that bloody hallway. Priyan, get your ass over here. Oh. Are we going down the hallway, Priyan? Same or so. just you? Okay. I'm going. I can, I can go first. It's fine. I'll go I'm second right so you. I can be closer to Melvin. Even though he hates me, apparently. Oh, I never said <laughs> that. Keep an eye out for... Uh, You're taking things a little extreme traps. there, Sarayan. Well, yep. apparently I'm not any good at that, so uh, I'll just The rain is 17. Right <laughs> so I didn't yes. say you were any not any good. I was just saying Melvin's better. So it you is. said I'm not any good. Mel no, I said... Again, again all with the all or nothing reactions here. Like, <laughs> can y'all just, like, chill your collective panties, please? Can I push him into something, and then that would that would definitely calm calm my panties. When when Sarian accuses Melvin of of hating hating her, he definitely starts to tear up a little bit. Oh. I, I never said that. Man up, Melvin. You said it in your actions. Sarian starts walking I'm and journaling now. aggressively. <laughs> Today, uh, I, I, I I'll 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 give Melvin a little <laughs> side hug. I don't understand. I won't fool with tapping the floor again. Why do girls have to be I... so mean to me? Hey. First of all. You deserve it. Another says it. No! <laughs> no! I listen to the door. Don't take it to heart, Melvin, okay? You're a sweet um... guy. Go ahead and make a perception check. Perception, you say? I rolled a 17. Oh, 23. 23. Um, I, uh, so you hear silence coming from this side. And what does silence the, sound the like? Faint Peter? humming. I, and I don't, I don't know. That's my old with, friend. With this group, I've never that's heard it, so. Um. <laughs> you knew um, what you were getting into, I'm Peter. so sorry. <laughs> DM, what, what did you say? What did you say was coming from this door? A faint humming. Okay. Inaris, would you like to check for traps? I step back sarcastically. Only if you're the first one through that door. And I guess I'll walk over and check for traps. Go for it. <laughs> I use my I use my inspiration to give a disadvantage. Fifteen! Oh, I think you can do that. You use it you give inspiration to the lock? Yeah. <laughs> it's a 15, eat it. Amazing. Untrap like the rest. Eat it. There's so much what? salt in this group, right? Now. <laughs> it's ghosts of salt, Marsh. Go through the I mean, door. It's true. Alright. You open the door? Yep. Well, move your token on up, and Sarayan, please move your token to where you think you would be on the map, too. I would love to. As I'm you open back with this Melvin. door to reveal a <gasps> large room, oh, the most notable thing you see at the beginning is a tall, tall statue of a gorgeous elven woman gesturing down to a pool in front of her. She must be at least 10 feet tall. Her features exquisitely carved. And again, from solid jade, it seems that she is carved. Oh, what there is then oh, a pool filled with black water that seems to be bubbling or just almost like, uh, despite it being absolutely still, almost like there is tidal influence on it as it shifts around. You cannot see through it. It is opaque and black. And then around this pool, which doesn't seem to fit the um, design of the room at all, it seems to, f the room seems to have been featured with this, is a carving of, or a um, drawing of a ritual circle, which seems to have been done perhaps hastily, reminds you very much of the ritual circle you saw on the um, Emperor of the Waves, the ship with the, uh, oh. where you first encountered the uh, Kraken Priest and the Thalassic League. What now? I don't think we want to touch that circle. That's, That's some, some arcane sort of, shit there. Melvins, stay away from the circle. Is that supposed to be but some how sort of goddess? I, how will I write it down in my notebook if I don't go over and check it out? 
I'm guessing that's check Amberly. It check it out. How about we go over and check it out without touching? Well, yeah. I've never seen it, Debbie. Right. You can look, but you can't touch. Okay. Okay. It's at Amberly. I will. Actually, let's uh, look. how Mickey... about we throw a quick. I'm asking Melvin. Out. I'm not asking. I, I... Pretty uh, uh, Yeah, does this look like Umberly? DM? Make a. Uh, a religion check. Uh, 14. Not a great roll. So, not really what you think of Umberly is oftentimes depicted. More hag like, more covetous. Um, but she is known to be a jealous god. Um, you don't know how. Um, Depictions of her would vary based on her own worshippers. Um, I'm DM. I want to take a quick peek through um the book of rituals that we picked up off that guy. Actually, I don't know how to read Infernal or Aquan, so I'm actually going to pass it to someone, maybe like Sarayan, who speaks Aquan, um, speak and Aquan. see if she can find anything that looks similar to this in the, the ritual book. Okay, so Rain, are you going to read through it? Yes, absolutely. So, Serayan, the first thing about this as you look, as you open the pages and start looking, especially the parts written in Aquin, this is like a, the most prim Catholic schoolgirl accidentally opening up and starting to read Anton LaVey and Christopher Hitchens at the same time. It okay. absolutely <laughs> throws you the theology and the um, things. It is so profane to what, to the way you have been raised. It is the, it is incredibly offensive and contrary to your worldview. It is very intense. Um, but what you see is mostly related to sacrifices offered to the brazier that you found much earlier in the um, dungeon. Um, it also talks about a bit about the winding way and um, it also mentions um, the moods, the shifting moods of Umberly. Um, it lists the six possible um, uh, versions of her influence that can happen. Though it doesn't describe them, it uh, descri it lists them as Umberly's swarming hunger, the sundering of the Wave Mother, the reckless desperation of those who sail her seas, the unrelenting toil of those cast to her bosom, the, ad the addled mind of the Wave Mother's castaways, and the queen of the depth keeps each painful trinket. These are the six ways that her influence is exerted upon this area. Could we get that, like, maybe put in, a, put in the chat? Let me copy-paste, because I uh, <laughs> wrote it to myself. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Mamma mia. Should I, uh, Mamma should I explain mia. a little uh, slow? Should I explain a little slow so you can uh, type? Uh, so the first uh, one being no. Umberly's swarming hunger. What you can't, you can't just copy paste that shit. I could, but it'll be okay. Yeah, here Peter, we go. I All thought right. you were going to copy paste. You got paste. this. I got this. Oh, Umberly's Lord. swarming hunger, the sundering of the wave mother, which you know to be taking place right now. There is um, the reckless desperation of those who sail her seas. There is um, the unrelenting toil of those cast to her bosom and the addled mind of the wave mother's castaways. And then the queen of the depths keeps each painful trinket. These are the names of the possible effects down here. By the way, it's been probably about 10 minutes. Would someone like to re-roll? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll re-roll. That's a D, what? Six. D6. D6, crack and die. 
The queen of the depths keeps each painful trinket. The bottom on every wall begins to shift. And you actually see a beautiful scene begin to arise. The sun rises above waters at a city's dock that begins to slowly reveal itself. And then you see a docked ship, a man of war with two dozen sailors beginning to depart. And you see all of them then are changed by their journey. Some limp on crutches, some are carried off the ship on cots, yet all are calling desperately from healing for healing from the clergy of the town, yet none are to be found. Their hands will not be grown, nor their legs fixed straight again. Hooked hands and peg legs shall be their share. All creatures receive half healing from healing effects. Now. Rude. Okay. Good to know. Um, well. Uh, Melvin, um, could we take a quick gander at what we think the effect of this circle might be? Uh, um, I was waiting for someone else to walk into the room first, just in case. Can we, can we look from the doorway? Oh, Priyan's in. <laughs> Serene catches up to Priyan. <laughs> Priyan, you step in and you feel a bitter cold surrounding this room. Like midwinter, diving for clams. But no more than that. Enter. Um, does Serene feel anything? The same. You're resistant to cold damage, but you've been to deeper places in the oceans where tides don't seem to ever carry the waters close enough to touch the sun, and it is frigid. Pretty cold in here. Hi. Melvin, uh, do you want to have a look-see? And I can, uh, if yeah. there's an arcane or investigation check to be made, I would be happy to help. I'll, I'll take a look from the doorway first and see if I can get a good enough view. But if not, I will step into the room. Um, There's kind of a big old half sea elf brute standing in front of your face right now with a trident S and a net. Saran, move out. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 but yes, you can make the check from there. <clears throat> okay. Uh, is this it's a little bit harder check? to see from where you are, but you are trying to, you know, look around. You know. Is this an arcana check or? Yes, getting right up to it would be better. But yeah, you can do it from here. I'm helping. Thank you for the assistance. I have a twenty-one total. Cool. Um, with this, you determine this is very much like the. Um, the ritual you saw happening on the ship um, the sa similar pattern similar language but this seems to be ongoing um, the thrumming magic that continues to pulse outward and kind of almost um, makes you uncomfortable for a moment each time the arcane letters and sigils seem to glow up and increase it almost takes your breath away for a moment um that feeling when your heart skips a beat for a second, that moment of impending doom seems to be there for just a moment and then it subsides. This one is active, though it is actively containing something or actively making something happen. Um, in this case, there seems to be a, a name written over and over of Sekola, um, which, um, well, we'll just leave it at that. Um, and it seems to be a controlling spell or something binding or something that is transformative. Translating power of one thing into something incredibly different through the name of Sekola. It is uh, not honoring anything. Sekola. It is... Uh, manipulative 
and it is exploitative in the type does of it, magic. Does it seem like it's binding something that is present here in the circle, or is it binding something that is elsewhere? A little bit of both. <sighs> That's uncomfortable. Um, I do still have a dispel magic. I was not going to ask, yeah. My concern is that if there's something in the room that is bound, that it would be dangerous. And so if that is the case, we need to be prepared for that. Um, well, what we could do is we could try from a distance to to disrupt the circle first. Um, okay. And see if that works to to break the 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 effect of the 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 binding. Um, okay. We'd have to like smudge one of the lines or somehow damage it, um, preferably without touching it directly. And that might work, but it might be powerful enough to resist that. In which case, we would have to dispel it. Shall we uh, back out? Aye. Maybe you look can at, try. Look at the uh, rest of the room. Let's make sure there's nothing. There's. I mean, have we exhausted everything here? Have we looked uh, at we all this? Really is there done other stuff? In the room. No, we there's a deep pool you know? that she is gesturing to. You have no idea what might be in that. The water. This is, is the room black. of the humming, yeah. Mm-hmm. The rain. Uh, Where's the humming coming from? Um. It's the magic that's sort of occasionally making sound as the sigils burn brighter. So, what's that, Liz? Uh, so Sarayan kind of almost in a trance, not really fully comprehending what's going on, makes her way towards the lip of the fountain. Do uh, you just kind sure of you want to do that? Are, are, walking are on top of the uh, um, ritual circle there. Oh. Um, just... She's going. Serene, I, I don't... Oh, okay. Um... And I want to investigate the fountain. Okay. Can I put a little, little thingy in? <laughs> little toe? Um, yes. Did you do that? She's Rain. crazy, man. She's crazy. So as you first touch the water on top, um, immediately by reaching in, you take six points of necrotic damage. Brian lets out Just when gasp. your fingers touch it. Do you plunge your hand deeper? Yes. <laughs> what? Bye. Who are you? <laughs> is there something? Is she under some sort of effect? What's she doing? Someone st Can you to explain you what you're her. doing, Saran, at all? Or are you just going for it? I'm just going for it. So, Florian, Florian get her away running, from there. Goes running down the hallway and grabs her and pulls her away. Okay, Saran, you have the moment where you're about to plunge your hand deep down, and then you feel the the arms of your companions reach around your waist and pull back. No, there's something important here. Saran, not without hurting yourself. <clears throat> Serene casts or takes from her um, her lay on hands pool and heals herself and continues back towards Whoa. the fountain. No, no, no. Okay, three right. on, three uh, on. Uh, Serene, why don't you wait? And I, I'm gonna cast Mage Hand. Um, okay. And I will extend Mage Hand out over the water mm -hmm. and dip a finger of the Mage Hand into the water and see what happens. Nothing happens. Um, Serene, why don't you? Let me see if I can get whatever it is out with Mage Hand first. Uh, uh, oh, okay. There's something there. How do you know? I... I didn't... 
I haven't told anybody this, um, but, but Melvin, and she turns to look at Melvin, remember when we were in Kaladex Tower and we watched all of those visions of, or the memories, I don't know exactly what they were of the, the octopus priest, do you remember that? Well, I had, do you remember me asking about a voice? Yeah. There, there was a voice when I was there um, that I, I, I thought everyone must have heard, but apparently not. That, that whispered something to me, and I don't know why. I just feel like something, something's here. Do, do you also remember Keledic telling us that there was something powerful controlling the Sahuagin here? Because that might be this. And if it is, and it's trying to control you too, that's a problem. Well, so the voice told me that. And you know the whole reason that I'm here is to do Persona's will. I'm here on a pilgrimage. And it told me that his will can't be done while it exists, whatever it is. And then it told me to come find him and quickly. And I feel like there's something here. That might be the case. I'm, I'm, we are kind of on the same page that there is something here, Sarayan, but don't you think that we should maybe take a second thought about random voices that appear in our heads? Especially ones that refute the word of one's own god? I I mean, yes, but I don't know. Things it's, have gotten so confused for me since Jolek, and I just feel so I feel so out of control. It's okay. It's okay. How about, how about you come step back from the pool? We're going to get this all figured out, I promise. All right, but we're going to take it one step at a time, and we're going to do it in a way that puts people in the least amount of danger possible, okay? That I includes you. That the wizard priest thing. I, I do feel, I feel hurt. I, I'm, I'm holding my hand out to you. And Sarayan yes. has been standing at the lip of the pool, looking back at you over her shoulder, and... She nods and then moves toward you and accepts your outstretched hand. Yeah, I'm going to pull you in and give you a quick hug. Okay, right? I'm going to get this sorted. <sighs> One step at a time. All right. Okay. Work your magic, Melvin. Come on. I'm going to step into the room, DM. Mm-hmm. Do I feel the same cold that everyone else yes, has? Yes, you do. But nothing else happens? No. All right, I'm going to step forward and I'm going to gently put my hand out over the circle just mm -hmm. to see if anything happens as I cross the circle. It does not. Cool. I'm going to step up to the pool and I'm going to take a look into it. And you okay. said it's really brackish water, right? It is almost black. It is nearly opaque. I'd like to attempt to use prestidigitation to clean the water. I can only do about a square a cubic foot at a, at a time. But I just want okay. to see if that actually works to make the water clearer. So as you do it, the the water is... It's almost as if you're looking at depths and depths, though you know the water can't quite be that deep here. Um, it clears for a second, and you swear you can see the glint of silver for just a moment before it turns black again. Okay, I'm going to focus on that spot that I saw silver mm -hmm. and I'm going to attempt to use mage hand to grab whatever it is that's down there I'm going to stand by to cast a spell on anything that looks like danger might occur okay. in response well, to will be, disturbing this will be, you, you all are ready this is a very dangerous place so that'll be taken care of in initiative as you <laughs> all are ready um, the um as you reach down, your, your mage hand seems to find some type of object below the waves and touches it. 
you try to pull up and then it whoosh, the spell vanishes, dissipates, dispelled. Um, oh no, it's going to be one of those where we have to drink the water. <laughs> um, DM, I'm curious a, a little bit um, about the statue. Is there anything um, peculiar about it beyond, like, it's not umberly? Um, I mean, uh, looking at it, no, it's a beautiful elven woman clad in a simple, simple dress, simple but elegant, gesturing down towards the water. Okay. Um, I'm going to try one other thing with uh, Mage Hand, if that's okay. I'd like mm -hmm. to try to scoop some of the water out with the Mage Hand and drop it on the floor and see what happens. Okay. You see that the amongst the sort of chalk and other things that the ritual circle is drawn in, there are lines of what look to be colored sand and such. So as you scoop it up and bring it and drop it down, you hear this kind of gathering of arcane charge and then mm. suddenly it's almost like a crack and whatever was there the ritual circle seems to be rendered inert by the breaking of the lines well I was right about that uh, I'm going to take a step away from the the water at this point just in case uh, well, there's definitely something down there, but it dispelled my, my mage hand when I tried to pick it up. Um, just as a point of curiosity, I'm going to come forward about that far. Um, I'm going to um, Mary Poppins the 10-foot pole out of my bag, and um, I'm just going to kind of reach it in, and I just kind of want to see the effect of the water, if it has any, on a physical object. Okay kind of stick the end of the pole in and then pull it back you out. You dip it in for a second. You feel maybe like there's some type of object in there, but as you pull it mm. out, it looks, the end of the pole looks a bit withered, worn, mm. crumbling. I throw one of my nets in there to try and scoop it out. One of them? Do you have multiple? I thought. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got three nets and one of those, that proper net. Another two nets net? and okay. a proper net okay you throw it in there and you hear almost a hissing sound <laughs> bubbling it disappears beneath the surface if you yank on a rope attached the rope alone comes out um dm could we call upon talise to use control water to try to eat I some of the water out of the oh you can do that okay i can shake water yeah okay just like send okay. it out the back side um, away from us. I do like a Moses effect. Try to shape it. <laughs> if, as you do, every time you part the water, it seems to rise up again underneath. There's an unnatural amount of water that seems to be contained in here. Someone is going to have to sacrifice themselves in order to get at this thing. Do it. Before before we do that, I rummage in my pack and pull out a small, empty ink bottle. Uh, I'd like to I give it to the mage hand, and I have the mage hand sp scoop some of the water up into the ink vial. I'm going to stop her okay. there. I'm not going to dissolve the ink vial. Oh, what did you say, Sarayan, by the way, before? I said I'll do it. No. Um... <laughs> Before we do know. anything else, can we just kick, take a quick peek around the rest of the room? Um, see if there's anything else to be found in here. Uh, how about a joint investigation check, Melvin? Sure. So a few of you break off from your main target here and start to look around the room. That'll be a 26. I've rolled a natural 19. Ah, okay. shit, boyo. Um, there are some chests in the corners and such. This pool remains with the figure gesturing downwards, but some of you move off and look around, you find um, 
indeed what seem to be actual treasure chests. <gasps> to the tune of probably about 1,500 in gold and gems. Okay. Um, and, oh, uh, excuse me, 2,000 in gold and gems. And then okay. um, some potion, two potions of healing and what looks to be another bag of holding. Mm. Okay, I'm writing that down. While Mariah and um, Melvin are rooting around, what does the rest of the group do? I'm trying to think of a way to get at that thing without... She takes a look at Fargles and says, I don't suppose you mind trying to get it. And Flogger goes, goes right and jumps into the pool. <laughs> okay. Um, as that happens, you see the outstretched hand of the statue yeah. turns and seems to point a finger. And uh, Fargo, um needs to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. All uh, right. Constitution saving throw coming right up. Boop. I have rolled a seven. Take 66 points of necrotic damage. <laughs> Goes back to the Feywild. 66 or 66? 66. Right. Both in, in case areas, wasn't uh, sure. So both, actually Nether and, um, and Talise, unfortunately not here, and then um, Sarayan both hear a faint humming sound in their head. to concentrate on that sound. Does it sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's what's her name, isn't it? Who? The one we set free. Elsie? So I'm thinking. Does a song sound familiar to you? Um, not to, uh, not to Nether. All right. Serene is the um, same song you yeah. heard in the vision. Yeah. I, I I swear there's something we know there's something here, but it's it's for me. Well, and Serene dives into the pool. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Serene oh, oh, Okay, interesting. We doomed. You dive head first and first of all take uh let's see. The hand has relaxed and begins to point its finger again. Um, take f four points of necrotic damage as the water bursts around you, and then you feel what seems to be a solid object for a moment. And time sort of freezes around you, and you obey, and you'll be safe. You. Who are you? Who am I? I'm Sarayan. It's not actually very important. Who do you serve? Persona. Answer me honestly. Who do you serve? P Persona. Things are going to be difficult, but I'm going to help you. Who are you? My name is Wave. The Wave Mother? No. Just Wave. Oh, okay. You're going to die now. Oh, shit. Just for a bit. Oh, oh. I, I understand. You promise Persona is the one you serve. Persona is the one I serve. Swear it? I swear it. 
This is why I jumped in. You'll be back. Okay. And you all see the finger point and Saraian's body is thrown backwards from the pool with a gorgeous silver trident inlaid with shells and other nautical motifs as she falls on the ground, lifeless, unbreathing. And as she does so, you see the jade statue begin to move, shifting about. It reaches down into the pool again and almost formed out of the dark water itself, a giant 10 foot trident emerges and it brings a head to the beautiful elven face. The mouth begins to stretch into giant fangs and it just <laughs> rips its own head from its body and starts to stretch it forward. And you suddenly see this statue grow f these long fangs and start to move forward to attack you. At this time, um, you hear the voice in the back of your head, Saraian, after blackness. Time to wake up, servant of Persana. And <laughs> breath fills your body as an enormous vampiric jade statue begins to march towards all of you within this treasure room, carrying its own head outstretched to bite and to take the life from all of you. Unfortunately, it's getting a little late for a boss combat, so we're gonna have to pick that one up another time. I need mm. alcohol for that. But, um, players, this is something that can be wielded by a few of you, but since it was picked up by Saraian, it reveals most of its nature. Please meet the artifact wave. <laughs> Very cool. Nice. 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 Uh, if someone would like to, I don't know if you are all familiar read with it. It's a classic old school, uh, one of the oldest uh, um, uh, Sentient items Aww. out there in the game. Um, if, if anyone time, would like can't to see read the, uh, the description, can't see the description. Yeah, it just says hello. Oh, the GM notes. The okay, the I, again, so it instantly attuned. Um, so it looks pretty. Here you guys go. E. Oh, can I read it? Go ahead. Do it. Held in the dungeon beneath the Isle of the Abbey, this trident is an exquisite. A weapon engraved with images of waves, shells, and sea creatures. You gain a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. Holy crap! <laughs> it doesn't say that. If you score a critical hit with it, the target takes extra necrotic damage equal to half its hit point maximum. The weapon also functions as a trident of fish command and a weapon of warning. It can confer the benefit of a cap of water breathing while you hold it and you can use it as a cube of force by choosing the effect instead of pressing cube sides to select it. That's amazing! Wave is a sentient weapon of neutral alignment with an intelligence of 14, wisdom of 10, a charisma of 18. It has hearing and dark vision out to a range of 120 feet. The weapon communicates telepathically with its wielder and can speak, read, and understand Aquan. It can also speak with aquatic animals as if using a speak with animal spell, using telepathy to involve its wielder in the conversation. What? Also, oh, it's yeah. <laughs> Do we also get those sweet goggles that are in that picture? Mm -hmm. Can I have the coins? Saray comes up wearing the goggles. Got <laughs> 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 oh, like a trident. She's like goggled. Yeah. Um. That's a lot. That's Wow. Okay. That's dope. I'm not it's letting that go, guys. Sorry, I it's died wave. for it. Well, yeah, and the, it'll the be interesting voice to spoke to you. I mean, it's meant to be yours. It'll be it'll be interesting to explore because wave is um, temperamental, and the way and as a sentient magic item, attunement is a little bit flexible. So we will explore the relationship between the party and wave, who is. 
has its own purpose in the world and um as a sentient magic item that's all they really care about so uh it'll be a fun thing to kind of explore and figure out moving forward but um awesome. you know depending on aligning with it it might be kind of cool peter um, actually also gives a little bit more to explore in this particular dungeon too so That'll peter actually gives a lot of fun um artifacts that that don't have a downside to them <laughs> those don't yeah. exist in my games thanks <laughs> you... thanks a lot sean <laughs> sean okay. You don't really know that yet about Wave. You know, wow, Peter. Well, You've you, already you killed, killed me twice now. Twice now. <laughs> you did die. Oh my god, you died. Oh my god, I died. Oh my god, you guys. This is the second campaign that Peter's run where I die. <laughs> and unfortunately, though, you will be able to arise attuned to this thing. You will lose your uh, first round in the combat when that ah, comes up. Beans. Damn. Yes. But uh, you have no need broken for the shit. ritual that was binding, um, that was affecting the rather um, a nearby uh, uh, priestess of the Sahuagin and had been sort of corrupting some of the influence and communication of their god Sekola, which would be easy enough to figure out later. Sekola. It was only, it was only oh possible because of the immense power of the captured weapon of Wave um, that had been held by the um, the cult of Umberly for quite some time. So now it's free. Yeah. Um, Freedom! Freedom! Shall we do a giveaway? It's interested to meet all of you as long as you worship exactly who it wants. So, Which is Persona, right? Maybe. Persona. Persona is acceptable. <laughs> um, but okay. Wave is temperamental. So we'll see. God damn it. <laughs> Damage. So. God damn it.